Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, it's about what, six o'clock. I was supposed to be here since five o'clock. Let's see who will be the first one in the chat. Deep, 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 Okay, six o'clock we start some chem. I name this session from zero to here and I'll explain that just now. <laughs> so I see people on the uh, on the other side of my channel. I see two people watching. Two people watching the live. Let's go. Let's go. You are okay. Yeah, we seen some names. Pretty low. You got no Jama, Satish, Menace, Zakir, King Lavish, Just Kells, Giovanni, Josh, Shakiria, Shakiria. All right, All right. Jaya, Aruna. People touching down. People touching down. It's cam time, people. It's cam time. So we ain't starting yet, yet, yet. We you know we had to talk a little four minutes. Give people a little time to jump in. Give people a little time to jump in the live. 122 watching now, right? So we, we, we jump from 2 to 122. Welcome to those 120 people. They're all important, man. Chem time is here. We are going to do a lot of chem. I have some disclaimers to make. I have some disclaimers to make. You're seeing from zero to hero day. Obviously, that doesn't mean if you know zero in chem. Just one live with Cohen Springer going and take you to one or distinction in chem, right? If you know zero. You know, zero. <laughs> They're not going to make you get one of the distinction just so boom. Hey, we had to go to a little talk first. Let, the peop let everybody get the notification. YouTube will send out notifications like this. Instead of just doing so, and let everybody know that alive, they're just sending it out like this. Seeing people saying, ad matters, easy, ting, 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 click bit. <laughs> right? Um, press like, press like. Do all you have to do, press like on the stream so it will build up faster. What do you think about that matter? That matter is sweet. I, I get a glimpse of a lot of the questions. People tell me a lot of the questions. Seem like the only troubles, troublesome question was the question with the stationary points where you had to do a little back working. Some people was not accustomed to that style. Other than that, the matter is food for most people who study if you didn't study ad matter. Well. Ad matter usually like that. It's usually hard if you don't understand it, but easy, easy if you understand it. Right? <laughs> One of the identities we do. Come a lot of what we do come so that's thankful because you know when we do the ad maths end game thing, it wasn't so <laughs> it wasn't so it wasn't so a lot of what we do didn't come, right? So ad maths is either good or bad for people. Yes, I see the usual. This is the usual response we get for ad maths. It's either good or bad. Pure maths. I see a lot of people in Starbucks today in Trin City Mall studying pure maths. So that was kicks. All right, so let's get down to the let's get down to the thing. Chemistry, chemistry. So the zero to hero doesn't mean you're gonna be zero and just reach hero after watching this live, obviously. Um, but we're gonna do a lot. We're gonna do a lot, we're gonna walk through it. Also, I am a maths teacher. I can teach maths from my mind, I can teach add maths from my mind, I can teach pure maths from my notes and the book. I can teach those subjects because I've done a lot of them, right? And I did mechanical engineering. Chemistry, mm, I need a little textbook. I know all the concepts, but I need some textbooks to go through, especially the syllabus. Since I didn't teach chemistry nearly whole year, I only teach two students chemistry um, privately. And I didn't like teach them the whole syllabus. I just point out hard, explain hard stuff to them. All right, so do we do any electrolysis? Right, we do any electrolysis. Um, so that's just a disclaimer there. Also, I am functioning on zero sleep. All right, we have been doing this live thing every nearly every day now, and finishing eleven, then answering questions straight up to one o'clock, two o'clock. Sometimes I'm going to sleep on Instagram, and then I wake up, I go to work, I teach, then I teach lessons sometimes in the afternoon, and then I come back and I hit the live again. So I appreciate the fact that I have zero sleep. I think on my end game here myself, 
So tomorrow I can't I might be able to do anything tomorrow. I have a lot of private jobs and school jobs like for to promo help promote the school overloading. Right? So I seen two hundred and five people online. Y'all we just waiting for more people to come on. And the last disclaimer is you all know on this channel my policy with textbooks is that I don't just promote one textbook. I try not to promote a textbook because if I pro I have right now twenty one thousand subscribers. If I promote in one textbook it might mash up sales for our next textbook guy. It might mash up their sales or um, just boost up one textbook. I, I, I don't want to make no textbook war kind of thing. But for chemistry, I got to make a little exception. The textbook that I recommend for chemistry, for this style of revision here, the textbook that I recommend is this textbook. Right? Not saying that you can't use another textbook, but 15 years ago, this textbook saved lots of lives and it has been saving your lives since then. Well, 15 years ago is when I wrote. And this textbook made me go from zero to hero, um, get a distinction, I think, in chemistry. I think I got all A's in chemistry. Definitely got a one. So, this is the textbook we, we're working from. We're also running from the syllabus. So, I'll be using this textbook. I'm starting from chapter five in this textbook, from point five in the syllabus structure. And we're going straight up. Hopefully, we could take it straight up to organic chemistry. And that would mean we'll, we would have covered basically the first third of the the third of the syllabus. Obviously, I can't open the textbook and show you anything from inside the textbook. Otherwise, Antendale, who I feel, I feel like Antendale is my mother when it comes to chemistry. Otherwise, Antendale and um, who she working with now? Collins. Collins might call me and say, bro, why are you showing me textbook thing, right? I ain't going to show all of that. But we, you could follow along in your textbook. You could follow along in your textbook and work with that. Um, also, I also may use the extended version of the textbook which I also recommend. I have a good bit of chemistry textbooks. I have my pure maths chemistry, te um, I have my Cape chemistry textbook, and I have um, the chemistry for you and the next chemistry for CXC or some kind of thing textbook. But we ain't gonna use them thing. I feel really good there. All right, so that's the introduction. That's the disclaimers. I can't show you anything from inside the book, but you can turn to chapter five. We're gonna start from there. So it's like a lessons, but yeah, I can't show you the book, right? So those who do have the book, well, um, I like I just had to rely on what I tell him and stuff like that. Alright, so can see this woman never pay me to the tie she text okay? I'm gonna just put that disclaimer out there. But I mean and if you want to talk to me and thing, I show you could I show you know how to get in contact with me if you want to pass some money and thing. You know, a little ad <coughs> little ad deal, ad revenue and thing. Then go to help at that. tell the people that your textbook seem to be the best. Anyway, there you go. So we're going forward. 300 people online. Um, let me just. Sorry, I think I think you're hearing now. The audio is off. Let's look at the syllabus as far as this is concerned. 5.1, we're going up with that. So, um, oh, shucks, I forget to empty my iPad out all this stuff from last night. Oh, I'm so glad I, I got lots of positive reviews from the admins. I'm so glad people make it there. So, we need to explain the formation of Ionic. Of ionic and covalent bonds, you need to show. Now, I know a lot of you all will say, Hey, this is easy, skip this, skip this, next, next, next. But we're walking through everything to try and be complete. We will reach up to the tough stuff with titration, electrolysis, redox, all those things, right? So, just I'll, I'll run through the easier stuff a little faster. But this will help some people too. So, everybody know about ionic and covalent bonds, know to draw a dot and cross diagram. Predict the likelihood of an atom forming an ionic or covalent bond based on the atomic structure. You should know that, right? Um, write the formula to represent ions. 
ions, molecules, and formula units. You should know that. Explain metallic bonding. You should know how to do that. So we're looking at everything in, in section 5, what could come. Describe ionic crystals, simple molecular crystals, and giant molecular crystals. Distinguish between ionic and molecular molecules. Simple things relate structures, right? So you have to know this specific example. Excuse me, the structure of sodium chloride, the structure of diamond, graphite, uh, properties and uses. Um, talk about the melting point, solubility, water, conductivity, hardness, lubricating power, graphite, right? Um, so you're investigating melting point and solubility of solids based on whether they are molecular or giant covalent, giant molecular or ionic crystals. So it's basically ionic crystals, simple molecular and giant molecular, right? Um, and what's, what, else in, what else in section 5? Now this will most likely be a question for you tomorrow. This will most likely take, take on the form of a question for you tomorrow. Um, bam. Discuss the so we talk about that. This is the last thing is allotropes. So in section five, read section five. Section five in the syllabus is structure and bonding. How how good you think it you are in, in structure and bonding out of ten? How good you think you are in structure and bonding? You know you need to know how to draw certain things, right? So I'm going to be asking some questions. So you'll read section 7 out of 10 in this 10, 10, 9.5, 6, 1, 0, 7, 0, 1 thing. All right, so we're going to spend maybe about 15 minutes and run through this, this entire section 5. So this, this, this section is structure and bonding. Structure and bonding. All right, so let's see. We have three main types of bond, bonding. What are the three main types of bonding that we're dealing with? What are the three main types of bonding? Three main types of bonding. Can I see that in the chat? Ionic, covalent, metallic. Right? So we have that. What's the difference between molecular formula and structural formula? So the three main types of bonding. We have that. Now we want the difference between molecular form. Write the definition for molecular for, for molecular formula and structural formula. And empirical formula as well. So I, I need to see some definitions. So we have covalent. Metallic, ionic, structural formula uses the diagram. I don't like that definition. You see, structural formula is a diagrammatic representation. Structural uses lines to show bonds. Molecular like shows the number of each element. Empirical, the simplest form. Empirical is the simplest ratio. So I'm eating powder now. Right. So the definition you use is structural formula is first let's just we have the molecular formula we have the structural formula and we have the empirical formula you want a clean definition if I was you, I'd use the definition from this book. Once again, I recommend, that's the next reason I recommend um, the Anton deal, which is what we're working along with, that and, the, um, that and the syllabus, because they give you nice clean definitions. So I've seen good definitions now, number of atoms, each element in the compound, right? All right, so... What I want you to, the keywords you want to remember, the actual number of atoms So the actual number of atoms present, I just cut in it short to help you remember the keywords there, so I, I remember it In one molecule So, actual number in one molecule, the structural formula 
is a diagrammatic. You want to use this exact same word, diagrammatic representation. Right, of one molecule and lines between to show the bonds. So a diagrammatic representation of one molecule, but you also so that's it. You want to remember the, that with diagrammatic representation, and you also want to remember lines between atoms equal bonds or shows the bonds. And for empirical formula, you want to remember just this one. This one term. Simplest is these terms is like the max term and all the other thing is just filler words. <laughs> it's just filler words. Simplest whole number ratio. So those are the keywords you have to remember. I hope you're all writing it down with me. Or probably you know this already, so you're doing something else. You can just have the stream playing in the background and when you see topics that you don't know, come and do it. Covalent. So, how are you going to describe covalent bondings to or more? What I mean by that for empirical? Okay, we'll talk about empirical a little more. Okay. So, for example, if a compound was, this is C2H4. Um, this is... This is 18, so I just explain an empirical formula for somebody who asks. Let me use a different color. We'll use an example. We'll use an example. So uh, write the, the molecular. This could be a question in your exam. Write the molecular formula for 18. Write the structural formula for 18. And write the empirical formula for 18. So, example. The molecular formula would be C2. H4 for 18, the name would be 18, <laughs> um, the structural formula would be like this, and you know there are different types of structural formula, but we, um, I, I'm not going to do organic because I do all of organic in detail, real sweet and nice already, a lot of people already on that video, on organic video, and I see, also know we feel feeling like zeros. And also, y'all, I won't be watching the chat as much, eh? I won't be watching the chat as much. Um, so this is the molecular. This is the structural. But the empirical, you'll need to break it down. So like you see C2H4, you need to break it down into a ratio. CH2. This comes in more into plain um, chemistry in form 6. Right when you when you're doing some quantitative analysis. All right, so CH two. Why? Because it, it, like you, you break it down in the simplest whole number ratio. Okay, so for the new people who come on, I'll just tell them the, the the when they ask any question. Yes, we're gonna reach moles. Yes, we're gonna reach all these things, but we're going in order. We're going in order. Start from chapter five in the Antindale. I start from. Point 0.5 in the syllabus. You could work along with your Antindale. I can't show content from the Antindale for obvious reasons, but you could work along with yours if you have the book. Metallic bonding, metallic bonding, bonding between two or more non-metals is covalent. Metallic, so I ain't seen nothing for metallic or ionic. So that's this these these are obvious. Covalent is two or more nonmetals. Metallic is metal between metals. Ionic is metal and nonmetal. Alright, so I'm not gonna take no time on this. Between metals. You need to be able to explain all of these a little more in depth, but we'll come to that. What next? What next? What next in this? Any questions so far? 
Oh, you mean ask any questions you'll have based on what we do? So, talk about the election, C model, Cohen Springer. Yeah, I'll talk about that just now. I expect you all to know how to write formulae based on the groups. Right? I expect you all to know how to write formulae. Ding, 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 ding. Like, for example, what is the chemical formula? Move on. What is the chemical formula for these two? For, well, your, those who are the book open will be able to think it. Calcium nitride. Calcium is 2 plus and nitride is 2. Nitride is 3. It's a balance of nitride. 3. 3. Nitride. So just nitrogen alone. I ain't see no answers, they boy. CA3 and now calcium nitrate, calcium nitride, calcium nitride, CA2, no, CA3. So it's kind of do a little swappy thing here and two, two, three, because this will. This will balance back everything now to zero. Hmm. Hyper freezing way. Right? This will balance back everything to zero oxidation number. So you all understand how we do that, right? So anybody who come in late and ask me to please do something, anybody in the chat can just tell them he commented that we're going in order. We starting from five, going up. Now the reason this balancing is because if we have two plus here and we have three negative here. We have to multiply this by 3, so we'll get 6 plus. And we have to multiply this by 2, so we'll get 6 negative. When we add that up, we get 0 in the formula there. Alright? So let's move on. Maybe I can give you all the next one to do. The next formula to write. Um, determine the formula of these. Zinc, chloride, when you're writing your answer, write the question, write the number two. Determine the formula of maybe what's the next one? Um, potassium sulfate. Which means we, we might have to do sulfate. We might have to just touch the table because people play all kind of thing. Zinc chloride. Right. Um, so I see zinc chloride, correct? Potassium sulfate. Correct. Some people. Some somebody write lead sulfate. The um, aluminium hydroxide. So aluminium hydroxide is number three. Potassium sulfate. Correct. Right. So most people have the potassium sulfate. It's a new thing. It two S four. Some people have used to put a CM sulfate wrong. Maybe I should just swing back and touch this there. Very quickly. The, I, the, where is this? Where is this? I need to touch this for some people. Give, this is between cations and anions. So cations, you know, you have different valencies, right? You have the monovalent ones. Give me your monovalent aluminum hydroxide correct. So people get the aluminum hydroxide correct. So give me the monovalent um, cations that you can remember. Meaning like we have H plus. What else? Right. We have potassium. Give me a next one. Sodium. Copper, silver, and 
our good boy here ammonium and leave out any uh, I guess you could put lithium to any group one any group one metal will take your jump in here right okay so that's the monovalent what about the divalent the divalent give me some of the divalent ones divalent so you're writing this down so the only exceptions here in these would be what hydrogen uh, well, all of these you should know already, hydrogen, potassium, sodium, you just need to remember copper, really, silver, you should know ammonium one time, and you should know this because this is a group one. So you just need to remember copper and silver is one, right? The twos, the twos are those kind of amphoteric guys and magnesium. So we have magnesium, we have calcium, everybody else in two. Like, before we come to two. So two is the one you, you don't really bong to learn. You ignore two, right? Instead of trying to learn off all of those in two. You really just learn the trivalent. And everybody else will be in two, right? The trivalent will be Fe3. Fe3. Um, so Fe3, 3 plus. Iron, 3 plus. And aluminium. Because aluminium in group 3. So once you learn these and these, you know everybody. Because that's like the only thing you need to learn there. Copper is one, uh, silver is one. Iron is three. Well, it have one form of iron that is three plus, and there's aluminium with three. Everything else in two or one, you kind of should know that already. Once you went to a few chemistry classes, you should kind of feel out this. Right? So the cations are pretty easy. Um, so let's, uh, I think you all probably call out all already. We have calcium, not copper, yeah? copper is one. Copper is the hard one to remember already. Copper is one. Copper is not two, right? Um, well, actually, you have the two plus copper as well. So you have calcium, we have copper. Copper could be one. Copper could be one or two. Copper could be one or two. So I should put copper one here. And they would specify copper two plus um, this is a U and we have iron two as well now some of the, these are transition metals and some of them could exist in different oxygens um, different oxidation state because they could lose one they could lose two they could lose three depending on how they're feeling now right? what time of the day it is right so it might be important to write the number next to them but everybody else usually sits, set, settles down here um, we have zinc, we have tin, we have lead, these guys, um, amphoteric, uh, barium, group 2 metals, whatever. So we have that. The anions is, is, is more of the tricky ones. So let's see how we'll try and memorize this. Let's see how we'll memorize this. Obviously, we're going to learn the ones that are, are trivalent. Remember, this will be 3 minus. This will be 3 negative. Yeah. You have the nitride. What else? Phosphate, right? PO4, true negative. So those are the ones we're looking to memorize. Zion, wake up. So <laughs> let's say hello to Zion. Um, what else we look to memorize, boy? How are we going to do this, boy? Then, then we'll, you see, I'm trying to show you all how I would think about it. Oxide is, oxide is one that you'll always know. Because this this is very popular. Anything mm, you all have any techniques to memorize which, which you all yeah, you have to memorize. See see with you all you have um Zion wake up here yeah, memorize the divalent ones. If you memorize the divalent ones, you the divalent ones have less for chemistry. Three sec. So let's let's okay, let's memorize the divalent ones and once you memorize the divalent ones, everything else, ignore that. Now, somebody said this not coming, but this kind of tied into everything. You see, like just now when we was naming, we was creating these things. The formula, the formulae, the molecular formulae. You had to know this. So that's why I, I just dressed back to this, to this touch on this. And also to refresh with myself. I didn't 
that didn't teach this kind of easy part in chemistry in a long time. All right, so sulfide. Um, everything in sulfate except hydrogen sulfate. Hydrogen, anything is B1 minus. So polymers, polymers, I have done videos on that already. So uh, you all just remember to tell any new person that talking about any different topics that I am going to do it. Or if it's organic chemistry, I've done it already. All of organic chemistry has been done already. You can switch it up. It's been done very concisely. All right, so we have dichromate, we have carbonate, we have sulfate, we have sulfite. All right, so we have sulfite, sulfate, dichromate, carbonate, and then the rest will be the rest will be and I um, will um, will be monovalent. So we have the mono, we have the di. So yeah. I think the best thing to do for you to learn this if you're getting problems to learn this if you didn't do much chemistry and you're really going from zero to hero is to learn off this just get make sure that's it on with you the sulfide the sulfate sorry the sulfide the sulfite the sulfate carbonate dichromate everything else will be monovalent so the monovalent will be like hydride hydroxide which you should know all the halogen all the halides um fluoride fluorine chlorine well fluoride chloride bromide iodide and then the hydrogen carbonates the hydrogen sulfide sulfate sorry manganate and ethanoate ethanoate you should just remember as well the nitrates and the nitride too right so i didn't really write them here but in your book you could follow along with them so we are assuming that you yes you're zeroing on this now so doing these here should be easy let's just get them back over again zinc chloride so this is that. And this would be two. I shouldn't put it like that. I should put. I think this is two negative. How do you write two negative? Um, one negative one. One negative one. Negative sign come before or after. You all are seeing this. Two of this. So to balance it off. It's like the two come across here now. Right? Um, so I think it come after. Potassium. Well, potassium we have one. Sulfate. So let me see if you can remember. Sulfite, sulfate, all of those things. The only, the only sulfur thing is hydrogen sulfate. And that'll be one. Sulfate is two, right? So hydrogen sulfate, what, what would be that? And you know, eight. SO4 potassium so we have K we put the 2 here and you put SO4 right now if there was a 2 to go here you know you had to put this in brackets like that right and aluminium hydroxide will be ALOH because the hydroxide is hydroxide is 1 so it's like if you had to put 1 you know you'd write it all right so that was easy that was easy so you could go back into press into number 5 just leave it number 5 again Making sure we have everything. Um, let's talk. Let's talk about. Let's talk about covalent bonding. You need to draw that and know how to draw that and cross diagram. I can't really ask you to do this because I hate when so ball that was easy. Easy for you. Yeah, man. I make a mistake. When I make a mistake, somebody says, sir, I make a mistake. So I hate them. No, I don't think I make a mistake. I didn't make a mistake. Oh, I forget it, put it too here. I probably back it out when I write it. I probably back it out when I write it. Because I think I did say it, right? ZNCL2. Yeah. That's not a mistake. That's just a typo. All right. Mistake two. Um, covalent bonding. You need to know to do that and cross diagram. I think that easy. You all need to accept it. That that was easy. You all be coming to all those topics you're talking about. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're doing things methodically here. So, I just went through how you need to learn this. And I explain how you need to learn it. Allow your, allow yourself to learn it. Allow yourself to learn it, please. All right? Um, 
the covalent bonding the covalent bonding so let's do uh, some example of covalent bonding like if they tell you to draw f2 remember covalent bonding shares so i'll just do the let's do the last shell um i'll put this one in red easy things right so this is what i mean by a dot and cross diagram hey why this thing not working for me you have a long night ahead of you brother i can't give up so fast all right so but you, you need to know to draw it like first you had them separate then you draw them going together had them separate then it, so my plan is to do nearly everything other than organic chemistry I definitely going to do most of principles. Most of the first one, I think, is principles of chemistry or something like that. Then organic chemistry, then inorganic chemistry. It's three things, if I if I remember correctly, right? So F two. Um, let's try another one. Let's try CO two. CO two. CO two. Um, the journey carbon. How many in carbon outer shell? How many is in the carbon outer shell? When we talk about the tetravalency carbon. Carbon in group 4, that's right. 12 in carbon outer shell, 4. 4. So you put 1. What do you think of carbon dioxide? We're going to form double bonds. 1, 2. We'll make sure I join this nicely. Okay. Alarm ring off. Four. Then, um, oxygen. How many in oxygen outer shell? How many in oxygen outer shell? What's that? Nice. All right, y'all. So, you know, it's time to eat. We had five, six, two, two, six, right? One, 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 put dots. One, two, three, four. Better put them to the side a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if you count up now, if you take a little count up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, complete full outer shell, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, everybody feeling good. So covalent bonding is sharing electrons to get a complete outer shell. Or we need... could also represent this like O double bond C double bond O what do, what, what do they mean when they say diatomic molecule check what what do they mean when they say diatomic molecule I don't know. CL2. Molecules with two atoms. Of two, two of the same atoms bonded together, right? Name the seven diatomic molecules. Now, all of these form simple covalent bonds. Name these seven common diatomic molecules. Keep writing them there, take a look. Right. Hydrogen, 
so we have hydrogen we have hydrogen we have oxygen we have nitrogen we have fluorine we have chlorine we have bromine and iodine these here are halogen halogens right so they just bond up with each other they form strong covalent bonds between each other right but the, the molecules themselves have weak bonds right all right let me see if i could any questions so far a man say water water no water is not diatomic but water is still simple molecular but it's not it's not diatomic Ding 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 So I think we cover everything there. F is a halogen. Yes, F is fluorine. Hey, what going on with you there? You, you, so can I question is that? What I won't work next. That's not how you spell next in this chat, partner. Good one. Next. Well done, Lewis. Tell the people them. Polymers, please. I, why people keep saying polymers? Search Cohen Springer Polymers on YouTube right now and you'll see polymers all over the place. Right? Um, what's the different, what, what's, what's the definition of a polar molecule versus a non-polar molecule? So polar versus non-polar. Polar versus non-polar molecules. Let's talk about that. What's the definition between that? What's the difference between a polar and a non-polar molecules? They have charges. Next, next. Polar is slightly positive and negative. Yeah. Polar molecule is one that has DOH no polar soluble, non polar, not soluble in water. Yeah, that is a difference. Polar molecules can conduct electricity slightly, depending. Polar molecule is a molecule that can, yes, but what makes it polar and what makes it non polar? So let's talk about that. The example they're using here. I wish I um, keep chemistry was on point. It was on point like about three years ago. Otherwise, I'd be able to go in, in depth, but I kind of lose it back on chemistry. I don't really lose back on physics because I'm more natural in physics. But I can still teach you for c -sec, So let's go. Um, the example they use is water, and I'll give you a definition just now. But what happens, it has to do with the electronegative, electronegativity of each molecule. What about O2? O, H, H, right? What happens? The oxygen is so electronegative. There exists an electron cloud here. Now the electron cloud would look like that if everybody was if everybody was nice and good. But the real electron cloud is more like this. You could visualize it more like this. And if you realize the oxygen wants to have the electrons closer because there's there's a small I should say negative. Negative. There would be a there'd be a, a small negative charge in the um, pole on that side. Let me see if I use any correct word. Uh, partial negative charge thing. Bap, boop, bap, bar, yeah. Right. So it kind of skews the electron cloud. Remember this shit. Remember we drew this just now. Well, now we didn't draw this just now. We draw carbon, but it's similar with. Similar with each, except that you, you would have a double bond. So, like if I scratch off this and I put some more bond, let's draw the let's let's draw the bonding for water. How many in oxygen outer shell? Let's just review this. Next thing they ask this question. We have six, right? But we know hydrogen only one two. So that is we're gonna put hydrogen down here. 
and oxygen is just like a big molecule compared to hydrogen. Hydrogen only want two to finish him off. So bam, the hydrogen is all well and good. But the oxygen will still have two lone pairs up there. So because of that, this part of the atom is there's a slight negative negative excess charge going up there. Here will be slightly positive. Here will be slightly positive. And it will stick like that. So this making no sense? Oh, it's not making no sense. It's like they're playing tug of war for the electrons. And the oxygen is winning. The oxygen is keeping all the electrons. And where you know about electrons, the negative. And where you know about if I take away all the electrons, all the electrons really existing up here. Let's say most of the electrons are up here. The, the electrons move, eh? so they're mostly up here. Rather than down here, it will means that it means that the the nucleus of the hydrogen kind of exposed and what is in the nucleus of the hydrogen a proton so you have a positive charge again exposed out here and here again here again negative 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 right so because of that let's clear this whole thing and let's draw a cloud you can think of the water molecule like this this side negative this side positive this side negative, this side positive. That means it's polar. It, there exists a pole there. And because it's polar, because it's polar, if there comes, let's erase this again. Let's just draw a box to represent it now. Positive, negative. And next water molecule, positive, negative. What's where you think going to happen here? Attraction, and that is why water is actually a liquid. If it wasn't polar, it would be a gas. They would not want to be attracted to each other. But since it's polar, water is actually a liquid at room temperature, which is which is pretty good for a simple molecular COVID, uh, mole simple molecular structure, simple molecular bonding, right? So that polar molecules is like an additional force of attraction between the molecules. So you know, there's intermolecule intermolecular um, forces intermolecular forces and then there's intramolecular forces what's the difference what's the difference people you can take some time text text or whatsapp um, you can take some time. I, I don't know. I don't know. You can take some time and um, write that. You can also take some time and snap the thing and um, Instagram it. You know we do. I ain't see no answers. Trying to see if it on your syllabus per se. Yeah, we come in any definition for the polar and non polar. Why this isn't looking up, boy? One is weaker between. Right. So let's let's explain this using the water molecule. I join a box for the water molecule. Obviously, it wouldn't look like a box. Remember, we explained how it polar, right? This positive side is the side with the two hydrogens. This negative sign is the side with the oxygen because of the electronegative. Because oxygen is more electronegative, way more electronegative than hydrogen, right? What will happen between the molecules? there would exist a force. The forces between molecules, and everybody say there, intramolecular, intermolecular forces that exist between molecules. But now, if we zoom in, zoom in on that director, if we zoom in on the molecule and we, we see back this, we see back this, the force between the hydrogen and the oxygen 
that that bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen that is intramolecular forces that is the simple that is the strong covalent bond so inside here you have a very strong covalent bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen but on the outside you just have pretty weak forces that 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 um hydrogen bonding that taking place here you call that hydrogen bonding that taking place here so usually you call it hydrogen bonding the bonding between those polar molecules because of the difference in um, charges net charge of the molecule the skewed electron cloud in the molecule we call that hydrogen bonding that's weak that's weak that's why it's a liquid it's not solid it's not like it's a solid right right so we have people putting the answer so hopefully we get some clarity there let's get the definition for polar so this is the definition you want to hold on and I'll just put keywords and fill it in polar molecule in a polar molecule You'll use one. What should I use this with type, boy? Okay, I'll use it with type. One type of atom has um, delta po delta positive. You use this symbol, del which is like del del or delta positive, meaning just a little bit. We use this symbol in sciences and in maths to mean a small amount. Uh, so a partial positive charge and this is our next type uh, another type this is in the molecular of atom has a negative partial negative charge And why does this arise? This arises why? Why does it arise? Can you put the answer in the chat? Access all that. This arises because of difference in electronegativity. All right. Um, Uh, the electronegativity, that definition for electronegativity in case that come, but you're not really going and see that in a big way, but it could come. Electronegativity, that's not my iPad playing the fool. Um, what's a nice definition for you all for that? What's the definition you all use for electronegativity in CSEC? How, how strongly an atom attracts Attracts that two T's, what going on here, boy? Electrons. <laughs> right? So, electronegativity is how strongly an atom attracts electrons. How strongly? Yeah, here we go, look at that. The tendency of an atom to attract electrons to itself. Here yeah, we go, look at that too. Yeah, that's good. So, polar molecules arise because of the difference in electronegativity. The definition you want to talk about is a partial positive charge and a partial negative charge existing on the atoms different types of atoms within the molecule and examples give some examples of polar molecules well water is the big is the, is the big bad boy here always use polyatomic molecules with difference NH3 is the next one ethanol is the next one C2H 5OH, yeah. 
carbon dioxide here not as big you see these they're not as they're not as big and bad this one this one a little better than this one right and you could a quick way you could tell is by the state in room temperature right or the melting point polar molecules are normally have a higher melting point than or a higher melting point or boiling point than non-polar molecules because non-polar molecules not they're not really attracted to each other the only forces they have to rely on is van der Waal forces and we'll talk about van der Waal forces just now van der Waal forces is like forces by chance meeting excuse me meeting is not polar so meeting ch 586 is not polar so this is not one meeting is not one why is methane not polar? Because methane, sorry, methane, C, CH4, methane is, methane is non-polar because it just, it just, although there's a little, there's C and there's H, it's just perfectly balanced now. It's just perfectly balanced. Symmetrical, it's a symmetrical molecule, so it has no chance to be polar. Um... All right. So in a non-polar molecule, you'd have the opposite of this taking place. The different atoms, the electronegativity is the same or close to the same, so you don't have any difference taking place. It's similar. You can use it similar. Um, so that's non-polar. So give me some example of non-polar molecules. Somebody already said methane is an example of a non-polar. So if you're taking a look at the chat, you'll see some really good stuff popping out in the chat to help you with your revision as well. Somebody write something to me. Eh? Butane, ox all those all those diatomic molecules. So basically, yeah, the remaining has to have an empty space somewhere. I don't know what you're trying to say. <laughs> Why are you tagging me in that comment for? Right? So, alright. So, that's enough on that. Let's move forward. Let's talk about um, the different styles of bonding there. The different styles of... Now, nah, come to that. Let's talk about metallic bonding. Metallic bonding. What we know about metallic bonding? Saponification. Saponification. Anything in organic chemistry is already on the channel. Just search it up. Um, metallic bonding. Explain. The hair coming back. It coming back in a little bit. Every morning I come and I you know, put my hand and pray for it. <laughs> Pray for that hairline. Right, so basically what they say there, you have the cations and you have a C of negative charges that are free to roam, ar roam, roam around, delocalized. So keywords here would be like <sighs> delocalized, delocalized electrons. What other keyword you want to remember here? C of mobile. Of mobile electrons free to roam around all right I guess that is it that is it for metallic bonding it's held together in a lattice so you have to remember lattice as well you have to remember the cations can't move but the the yeah the keyword here is free the the electrons are free to roam this makes it so this makes it able to conduct electricity <laughs> Um, so we need to link this to properties, right? So melting point and boiling point for metals. What is it? Well, not melt, not boiling, not boiling. Yeah, we yeah, melting point, boiling point, boiling point is liquid to gas. Melting point is solid to liquid. Electricity, heat. All of these things 
and the, the conductivity of both of these things. Need to be able to talk about that and why. Whether it's malleable. Ductile. One more thing. Solid at room temperature. All of these properties come out of the type of bonding. So you need to be able to talk about these things and why in a nice clear way, hitting all the key points. So when you talk about melting point and boiling point, you want to talk about the strong keyword here again. The keywords, you know, keywords is how I help you remember. Um, strong electrostatic, that is the word you're going to use forces between the between the cations right anything else I require a large amount of energy to split them up uh, when we're talking about conductivity we're gonna talk about obviously we're gonna talk about the delocalized electrons or the sea of mobile electrons the localized electrons I forget solubility and insolubility. Um, yeah, but all right, yeah, but okay, solubility and insolubility of metals. Metals are in are by and large insoluble because they <laughs> they bond it together, right? But we know really, you don't really talk about that with metals like that. I don't remember that here in modern. We talk about solubility and insolubility for salts, right? Um, malleable ductile. Why, why does this happen? Why does this happen? Give me a definition for that. And for room temperature, you have to talk about the strong electrostatic forces again. Strong, I write electrostatic the forces. Room temperature, don't really break up the strong electrostatic um, forces. They are easy to bend and move, yes, but why are they malleable? Malleable due to the free flow of electrons? No. Why are they malleable? Right, Jalil put a definition. Yes, so everybody telling me the definition of malleable and ductile and thing, but ductile, ductile what? Ductile mean it can stretch. Malleable mean you could you could mess up the shape, you could take the shape. You cut it and slip over each other so it bends instead of break. That is what you have to see. Bends instead of break. So the cations are free to move about each other and the, and the lattice could be this form, the um deformed or rearranged, but the bonds wouldn't break. So remember what we're really holding it is the sea of electrons. So it could slip, the cations could slip over each other and thing, but it's still attracted to that little sea of electrons and lock it down. It could still remain locked down. It could change the structure kind of way without... The next keyword here is slip. Slip and cations. Right? The cations could slip over each other. All right, cations there. Um, I think that is it for metallic bonding. Let's move forward. And all of them are solid at room temperature except what? Except mercury, right? If I remember correctly, mercury has HG. All of them are solid at room temperature except mercury. Let's talk about different structures. There's the ionic structure. Explain this structure. And what you could expect in that structure. There's the molecular structure. No, I want to say simple molecular structure. And we we just went through this, and I'll talk a little more about this in case something else come on this. There's the giant molecular structure, and there is the metallic structure, which we just talk about, right? So four, four to remember. And you need to be able to 
compare, compare and contrast them in a nice way and collect all your marks. Skip moles are too easy? No, I don't think nobody wants me to skip moles here. Alright, um, so let's talk about them in, in terms of, let's compare these two. Ionic and simple molecular. What's the, what's the difference in the melting point between ionic and simple molecular? Um, what's the difference in the solubility between ionic and simple molecular? What's the difference between the conductivity between ionic structure and simple molecular? So that, those are the questions you need to ask yourself. So, melting point, solubility, and conductivity. Solubility. So, how they differ? So, I'll just talk about it here very briefly. Remember the ionic structure held together by ionic bonding. Strong bonds. Strong ionic bonds between molecules, between ions. Don't use the word molecules. Between ions, between the cation and the anion, they share strong, and I don't think we really talk about ionic bonding here in any way. Did we talk about ionic bonding? No, I'll just, just draw one simple diagram for ionic bonding just now. So ionic bonding, when you compare them, um, in terms of structure, ionic is held, the cation and the anion are held together by strong um, ionic bonds, this will form a giant ionic lattice, right? Now the molecular structure, we talked about that already. In terms of melting point, because of the strong bonds, and there's an intramolecular, there's an intermolecular bond, strong intermolecular bonds between the, uh, uh, well, I wouldn't use the word, I wouldn't use the word intermolecular, I just see strong ionic bonds between the ions, you expect it to have high melting point. The simple molecular one will have low melting point because they are weak intermolecular bonds. The strong, you know, the experience hydrogen bonding or van der Waals forces. We still had to talk about van der Waals. Remind me to talk about van der Waals forces. Do you all need to know van der Waals forces? You all ever heard that? Van der Waal? Just let me get some wise if you hear about van der Waals forces. Yes, we do. No, 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 no. Why? Yeah. Still good. Nah, nah, nah. So, no. So, people, again, why and no? Why and no? Anyway, just touch on it. Touch on it. I mean, uh, again, a good bit of wise with you know, So, like, you need to talk about it. We need to talk about it. Um, thing. So, solubility. Ionic structures are usually, ionic, ionic compounds are usually soluble. Most of them are soluble in water. Water is a polar solvent. Now, when you talk about solubility, you need to talk about polar solvents and non-polar solvents. Non-polar solvents would be like, give me some example of non-polar solvent. Now, the polar solvent that we always talk about is water. But non-polar solvents would be like what? Some examples of non-polar solvents. Uh, ethanol, ethanol, not so much. Don't put ethanol. Oils, yeah. Um, this is a nice one. Tetra chloromethane. So that's when that's when the chlorine replace all all the hydrogen around the carbon. Tetra chloromethane and gasoline gasoline kerosene don't put ethanol don't put ethanol i don't like ethanol ethanol have a little polarity in it now because of the oh don't put ethanol iodine yeah yeah right so this is the popular polar this is the, the popular non-polar solvents so ionic structures will dissolve in non, um, uh, in polar solvents. Most of them are soluble in polar solvents, but insoluble in non-polar solvents. Like you're not going to take salt 
and try and put it in kerosene, the salt don't want to dissolve in that. But if you put salt in water instantly, that salt will try to dissolve in that water, right? Um, and it works in reverse for the simple molecular, right? Most are soluble in the non-polar for the simple molecular, but insoluble in the polar solvent like water. Now, if you have polar compound, if you have polar compound like glucose, glucose is simple molecular, sugar, that little white powdery sugar, but yet it is polar, even though it is simple, simple molecular, it is polar, so it will dissolve in water. So those are like the exceptions. So polar, polar simple molecular substances could dissolve in polar solvents. You have to have a little polarity to be able to dissolve now. Hi sir, I am I'm from India. Can you I just get a comment on one of my videos? I'm from India. Can you speak in an English language? I can understand. I'm really sorry, but the one thing in my video, mostly Caribbean people will be, be able to understand the English, especially when I get the full swing, especially in like in the live. Um do not conduct uh, and conductivity, you need to talk about it in terms of conductivity. Obviously, your ionic substances will be more conductive than um your um simple molecular substances but they only conductive when they either dissolved in water whereas yellow ampersand they either methane doesn't exist okay why i take this down so big i hate this. so if i need to line first we looking around inappropriate whatever anyhow <laughs> this is giant. <laughs> All right, All right. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. Um, I try not to take too much stuff. I went down into the chat there. The what are we talking about? Conductivity. You need to know that ionic substances. Like if if we have salt and we just try to make electricity conduct through like a salt crystal, ain't gonna happen just so. So ionic substances conduct electricity when the ions and cations are free. Like in when they're dissolved in, in water in a polar solvent, or like when they are molten, like if you melt them, all of a sudden they could conduct electricity. They need to be able to move them. Okay? So I see now a little too much negativity. I'll bring it positive. Bring it positive. Inference, this is my process. Do not conduct electricity in, in any state. Right, so simple molecular substances, them just nothing that conduct any electricity business. No free electrons, no ions, no cations. To deal with that, we're not conduct any electricity, never, right? And finally, giant molecular versus uh, giant molecular crystals versus, we already talked everything about um thing, but let's talk. What's that allotrope? What is an allotrope? What is an allotrope? Please, in the chat, if you get lost, never ever again type you lost. Please, if you're getting lost, do not type you lost. You know what to type? Sir, so, this part and tell my specific part. Where, where you lost. Don't type your loss, please. Um, that's, that's how you should approach these things, anything. So people say the definition there, I don't need to write it. Same empirical formula, different structural formula. Different structural formula, forms of the same element, all those things we take in. Different structural forms of, this, of a single element in the same physical state. Oh, yeah, that's a nice part you can add in. In the same physical state, meaning liquid solid gas it's in the same state it's the same same gas but it have a different different structural form and give some examples of allotropes now or allotropy yes allotropy is the existence of this in a compound the exit the existence so when you when you when you're stating allotropy just start off with the existence and then put everything in of allotrope this is the existence this is the actual um, let's call it uh, phenomenon happening. So everybody's go for the graphite and diamond, different forms of carbon, and then there's the sulfur. Sulfur, yeah, sulfur have different. Uh, silicon dioxide is the next one. 
Sam then different um, and and something else. So the corner side is the next one. But we run for the diamond, right? Okay, so run through here, answer some questions. I'm going to ask you all some questions now, and we'll be done with five. I just had to talk about vandal forces, and we'll be done with five. Plutonium. <laughs> hey, Ole, just go with diamond as a allotrope. Eh? Um, so, uh, the question is sodium chloride, diamond, Carbon as diamond and carbon as graphite. Oh, I need to draw the diagram for graphite. You need to be able to draw the diagram for graphite and the diagram for 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 diamond. Well, you know diamond is carbon one, two, three, four carbon, 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 and each one attached. Each one attached to the next one, and so forth and so forth. Four strong covalent bonds, and these repeat throughout. So you have four strong ones in diamond, and in this. So this is diamond. The dot here represent carbon. And you notice you see one, two, three, four strong covalent bonds, and this repeats throughout. In diamond, each carbon atom is bonded covalent with the four others, which ah, the our next keyword to remember is the tetrahedron. Tetrahedron. To explain the structure now. Um, for graphite now, for graphite, if my pen would work properly, for graphite, you, have, you only have three strong ones. Kind of forms a, a, a layer like this. Drawing this correct, but buddy, yeah, buddy, yeah, buddy. Let's draw. It. Let's let's get this layer down. The layer is form a kind of what shape is this, boy? One, two, three, four, five, six, six, six-sided figure. So that is what taking place there. See that? Now between each between each molecule, you see what going on there? So it has six sides. So between each there's a there's a six. There's a hexagon, but um it's not really a regular hexagon because we're not too sure about if the lengths of all of these would be the same. Not too sure about that. I guess it should be the same. I don't see any reason why it should not be. So yeah, it could be a regular hexagon. Now, you need to imagine this layer like a sheet so, and that there's a next layer existing right underneath that. Probably I could draw it in purple. Hopefully this come out good. Bap, bap, bap. But no, I don't see it not coming out good. Bam, 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 ding, ding. And between these layers, they connected to the to each other like that. So, but the red lines are weak, weak covalent bonds. And these, naturally, not weak covalent bonds. Which is how you define it? Weak forces of attraction between them. Use that word. Don't use the word weak covalent bonds. Weak forces of, of attraction between them. These electrons here get delocalized and they start to move. So these electrons is be uh, is move about similar to similar to a metal. Similar to how the electrons in a metal is move. Um. All right, the hexagon is regular. Thanks, thanks, bro. So these electrons can move, and that that allows graphite to have a few unique proper properties. One, since it have weak but strong, you know, it has some strong things. There's strong covalent bonds. It will be very similar to metal in a way, in a way, in that it could slip. It could slip. You could use the, um, graphite to lubricate stuff. It could slip over each other, 
and it could also conduct electricity. Graphite could conduct electricity, right? Uh, which is which is very weird for a covalent for a covalent substance. Alright, so that's that's carbon and graphite. I'm not sure if you're doing blah, blah, blah. Let me just see if I get a better diagram on the internet to just make sure this is very complete. When I done a topic, if this topic come and you were watching, let me see some wise if you were watching from basically from start to finish so far. Let me see some wise if you're watching from start to finish. This will mean that if this comma and you revise, you was revising along with me. The estimated length of this live session. This live session will go on for a very long time, but what will happen when it reaches three hours? I'll turn it off and start over our next one immediately. Because if I keep doing, if I hold the whole thing long, it wouldn't load back up. By the time it's ready to load back up, it might be tomorrow evening after the exam. Alright, graphite. Let me just watch a diagram of graphite to soak it in the system. Um, who got the best diagram here? So you could go online, just watch your thing. I only need some people let's wait on people to bring you food for them. And then they operate. Sometimes you could you could find your own fish in a you could find your own fish. I try to promote that in my channel. There's there's a there's a great scene by one of our singers. Nobody wanna plant the corn. Everybody wanna read the barn. <laughs> right? You had to plant some corn. Don't only wait for people to plant corn and read their barn. If it's a barn readers, don't be shame if it's a band reader. Put why in the chat. If you're just waiting for people to write notes and take down notes and things, if you're that kind of person, are you a band? Are you a, are, do you plant corn or do you read the band? What kind of person are you? And sometimes there's time to read the band. Eh? I'm not saying live all your life planting corn. Sometimes you're reading some bands too. But you need to know how to plant corn. You need to know how to study for yourself because only you know how you would learn. right? So once again, this is graphite. I mean, this is diamond, sorry, and this is graphite. And in between the layers, we have some weak bonds. So we can go back to this. And now talk about these three things. Nobody want to plant the corn. Everybody want to read the barn. Plant some corn, people. Nothing could replace good hard work. Alright, nothing could replace some corn. How many of you all ever plant corn and harvest your own corn and eat your corn? I did that when I was about seven years old. Maybe younger. That's a good feeling, isn't it? To plant corn, water your corn, see your corn grow, come pick your corn, peel your corn. Put a secret, a tip to this is that I put it in the microwave for like about two minutes, then you take it off of the, out of the microwave. Um, Stick a fork in it and put it on the stove and roast your corn. There's a there's an inside way to roast your corn. I'm teaching all how to roast corn in this too, boy. All right. So you need to understand the differences. The differences between sodium chloride, diamond, and graphite. Compare all of them in terms of and make sure you can do this. I think we talked about this. I just bringing it up. Melting point, solubility. Up in S for solubility. Conductivity up in C and electrons for conductivity, how hard it is, and lubricating power. I'm going to spend two more minutes on this and I'll be done with this chapter five. So, the melting point high, high, high. You could put, I see, they put fairly high here. And by the way, the book I'm using here is the Antendale book, and I'm using the syllabus as well. I'm using the next bigger book. You could follow any Antendale book. High, very high, very high here. Diamond and graphite do play. Them is, them is 3,600 degrees Celsius and thing to deal with them, to melt them. This is 800, which is higher, but not as high as diamond and graphite. You ain't going on, it's not like you're going to melt diamond and graphite there soon. Otherwise, so if, if you feel the ring that the boy gave you on Valentine's Day fake, just go and pay it by the stove if it starts to melt. But who in an actually um, put a diamond ring on the stove in the first place? Anyhow, solubility. This is soluble. 
this is insoluble and insoluble. Insoluble because they are them covalent bonds. Even though this have one delocalized bond, it's still actually covalent bonds are saying Bergen, hold yourself, hold, hold, know yourself, you pay, pay covalent, better, you covalent. By and large, you covalent. Don't play, go and try to dissolve in those polar solvents here. That's not happening. Plus, to begin with, it is not going to dissolve. Conducts electricity. Well, you notice when you conduct electricity, if it's aqueous or if it's molten, if it's a liquid, does not conduct electricity. Nah. Diamond is just like, nah. And this one, yeah, because I did localize electrons. Hardness. This is hard, but you also have to remember that it's brittle. It's not like you're going to get, you, you would never find a big solid piece of salt. <laughs> Right, it could break, it would break around the lattice lines. Right, how do you say it? The pressure is applied, the layers of ions are displaced slightly, and ions with the same charges then repel each other and break the lattice apart. It could break along the lattice lines. Um, diamond, diamonds are forever, right? Very hard, this not do no breaking. In fact, we use diamond to drill things, and the graphite, well, the graphite is soft, soft and flaky is the keywords. Soft and flaky, right? I hope you're, some people should be writing and the lubricating power, none, none, yeah. In fact, they only put this lubricating power here just to specifically make diamond feels, I mean, graphite feel special now because you know, graphite could slip and things, so right, you could, you could use it as a lubricant. Any questions to ask? We good on chapter five. Somebody put it in the chat there, somebody put it in the chat next. Wait, before we go next, we need to just talk about Van der Waal forces. <sighs> what the hell is Sir doing? Some of you all must be saying, what the heck is Sir drawing there? Let's just mention Van der Waal forces in case you see something ridiculous pop up. We talk about water, right? And I join a box to represent the water molecule H, H, O. You understand? H, H O tap 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 right this side was positive this side was negative what is the in what is the intermolecular force taking place here the intermolecular force taking place is hydrogen bonding between them not van well van der Waal force is taking place as well but the major intermolecular force here is hydrogen bonding between them right because you have Delta negative, delta plus taking place. And when we explain this already, Ministry of Education, Cohen Springer, keep it up. We'll be right here watching the conduct of the students of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> Trinidad, you got a bad name. <laughs> Me, uh, I'm laughing by from Trinidad too. Hey, it's not Trinidad and it's Tag Boss, but you know, if I don't know if anybody know about Tag Boss, but it's Tag Boss, how we say it. Tag Boss, Tag Boss, any friends? There? So delta positive, delta negative. So this is what keeping, and this is why water is liquid at room temperature. Now, what about a substance that is non-polar? Let me say H2, H2, hydrogen gas, or N2, N2, nitrogen gas. It's just non-polar, it's just, just a diatomic molecule. Perfectly symmetrical. How are they going to stay together? Uh, they usually don't want to stay together. But this is where Van der Waal force is coming. Let's suppose we have this, mol this molecular substance here. Let's call him X. And let's suppose X has one, two, three, four electrons. Let's put the electrons red. I'm only going to take two minutes to talk about this. We have plenty of things to do. It has four electrons running around there. Four electrons running around compound X, who is simple molecular. Van der Waal forces happen. These electrons moving, right? Sometimes, bam, you look sharp. All the electrons on one side, just randomly, they appear on one side. Which means a temporary, temporarily, here more negative than here. Temporarily, here just more negative because the electrons kind of lean in towards this side more than here. 
So temporarily, it get polar. So Van der Waal, the key word you want to remember, especially for CXC, where you don't need to go deep into this. Once you hit them, that temporary, they're good. Van der Waal is temporary. Van der Waal. Temporary. I find certain like Cory in the house with a hairline. So trying to help you out and I just kick it in the chat. Yes, behave yourself, distracting Sue. And I, I, I trying to help you out. I just let me just find a nice little diagram for this for you all, for the people. I just to make sure these diagrams don't have um copyright on them and thing. So it's be a little troublesome. Bam. For the people, this will be a little faster. So temporarily, all the electrons on one side, this exposes the, you see what happened to the cloud here? Just temporarily. And when that happens, it will induce or impose the molecule we had just now. If another molecule is nearby and he do, he misbehaving, I'm going to put the next molecule small so it could fit. If the, another molecule is nearby and this molecule misbehaving, all the electrons run on this side, it's going to frighten the electrons away in this molecule. Because these electrons, these electrons are negative. So if it's see one stand negative here, negative and negative don't really mix. Bam! The van der Waal forces will induce a temporary dipole on all the molecules around it. And that would open up itself for a little attraction. It's just like in physics when static, e static electricity is used. Um, and he explained static electricity. I did a video on that. You can check it out. So here, since here is slightly negative and here is slightly positive, there's weak temporary forces of attraction that arise in the electron cloud due to the random movement of electrons. So, and the definition that you want to give, a quick definition for van der Waals forces in case CXC while up. The quick definition. Straight off of notes. In case CXC on a while up. So we nearly done in chapter five, people. We're going on to the next weak. I don't know if you can see that. Weak short range electrostatic attractive forces between uncharged molecules arising from the interaction of permanent and transient. Uh a little too much. Um let's use the word temporary here. Forget about permanent. Temporary electric dipole moments. So, students who feel a little adventurous, you can just go on Google, search up that, and use that. I wouldn't use that big word transient and thing. Just hit them with the temporary. Let's go forward. Chemical equations. Writing balance equations. It's going to skip all that because we'll see that as we come into other topics. So, we're in chapter 6 now in this book. We in, let's look at it in the syllabus first, like what we do just now. Whoop, 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 whoop. Chapter 6, dealing with mole concepts. So we might just jump into moles. Yeah. That look like the way to go. Wait. Thing relate. Ah, it's been on Chapter 6 here. So I'm pulling out chapter 6 for the people. Not chapter 6, topic 6 in your syllabus. I want to make sure I cover everything. Going forward. Next, next, next. Skip moles. It's too easy. Are you ready want me to skip moles? Why? Let me see some. Why is it for you want me to do moles or skip moles? Skip moles? Do moles? Moles. People say moles. Do moles. So the glue on your forehead is still big. Last time people complain about the glare so much we had to go and get napkin and wipe off the glare. The same as wipe your face with your hand, ting ting ting. All is the light, is the lighting, is the lighting. Alright. Lord Father, I make it worse. Maybe not. So just letting you know, somebody say something important. 
Yeah, so just letting you know. Yeah, I know about fair use. I know about fair use. Where see YouTube? Obviously, I know about fair use. I'm a YouTuber, but um, there's something called copy striking. What is called copy striking on YouTube? People could still people could still copy strike here. Yeah. People could still copy strike here, yeah? even though you use it and a fair use. And then you're going through a long process to get a video back up, and ting, 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 and ting, ting, ting. So just avoid it, avoid all the hassle. Right? I know when you're teaching, you could do, you could, because I am taking the information and using, reusing it, um, and teaching off of it. So you can't really, you see, can we copy strike PewDiePie? Some people know about it, yeah. The YouTube system kind of messed up. So, like, if somebody just think they could copy strike your video, and once they see that little part of your video of their stuff on it, they could do that, right? Define mole. Oh. Look, I see my next pen. This pen going through. Have this pen here. But this pen don't write as good as that pen. All you want to know, people, you have to go and find the next. I have a next one and I have a refill for this. Like I read another point. All right, so you're starting at moles. So you have to define mole and molar mass. Simple. In fact, it right here. The mole has the amount of substance that contains 6 by 10 to the power of 22, which is also called Avogadro's number. Or Avogadro's constant. I say Avocado. Avogadro's. <laughs> Avogadro's constant. You find it? Sweet. Yeah. If you could find the unbox of the tips, I figure I'll put the tips. Alright, I have a next one, back up. Be prepared, people. Even if you're scared, be prepared. Define mole and molar mass. So six so it, everybody should know this definition. Let me see some ends if you don't know this definition yet. If you don't know this definition yet, well brother, I don't know what going on with you. Because that is like one of the first definitions people is memorize. To form calculations involving mole, this is where it starts to get technical. So you'll have mass. You'll have percentage mass involved. You have your RMM involved, you have your RFM involved, you need to know about all those things, let's go on, let's go on. No definitions are required for relative masses, really? Okay, distinguish between molar mass and relative masses, so between RFMs and RMMs, distinguish between them. State Avogadro's law, calculation involving molar volumes, and you must know about RTP and STP. How are you feeling with this? How are you feeling with this? You must also be able to state the law of the conservation of matter. Right, the law of the conservation of matter. Right, balance equations. Use of both ionic and molecular equations to represent chemical. So this is equation writing. And this equation right in part here, I'll kind of skip, but not really skip. You understand? Because when we're doing the other topics, you'll just see lots of equations popping up and we'll talk about them as they arise. All right, so let's let's touch on moles. Let's touch on moles and change in between volume and mass and moles. So everybody should kind of have an idea how to write a balance equation. When I'm done moles, I'll come back and, and talk about that. Types of chemical reactions moles. So, people who follow in any textbook, I skip chapter six and chapter seven to come back to that because we're going to touch moles right now. So it's one. So everybody who is online, I'm going to turn off the live stream and turn it back on again. Should I do that? No, no, no. It's one. It's, I'll do that after we done moles. So after we done moles, I'll turn it off. Turn it on again. So, you notice there's no definition for relative masses are required. I trust them, so let me just learn that. So, what are the three states of matter? I see that in the past, if I can't remember. Crack my blade up. Definition for all of them RAM, RMM, and RFM. State the definition in the chat, and then we'll move on. Let's see definition for all of them.
Where's the dog now? It's people missing the dog back. If we are allowed to take in the periodic table, you're not allowed to take in anything. But nobody in the definitions are they the or the pain the what it stands for. Relative atomic mass, relative molecular mass, and relative formula mass. So one is atomic, one is molecular, and one is formula. Yes, but where are, okay, where are they used then? Is it really Trinidad if you don't have a baby or, or a dog in the background? Where are they, where are, where is it used? Definitely know the one for relative atomic mass the definition. Nobody in pain. Yes, somebody put the one twelve the mass of right. So the relative atomic mass is the average mass of one atom of an element compared to one twelfth the mass of an atom of carbon twelve, carbon twelve isotopes. So definitely know that one. And for all of the other ones, they just change it to one molecule or to one formula unit. Instead of saying one atom of an element, you're changing it to one molecule of an elemental compound or one formula or unit of an ionic compounds. Ionic compounds. So this has to deal with ionic compounds. And this one has to deal with the molecular compound. Molecular molecules. Molecules or compounds. Right? Covalent stuff. Or polyatomic stuff. This one has to deal with an atom in itself. All right, so that's enough of that. You're not allowed to carry the periodic table inside, but you should know all the way up to 20. But I say, I think that's where you have to know up to in, in, in CXE. Let me know if, where, where are the teachers say you have to know up to? You all, obviously, the people who say they have Ministry of Education and CXE are Some people say in 30, some people say in 20. Calcium, potassium, calcium, 20, calcium, right. All right, so let's do a question. Let's do a question one time. What is the RMM of glucose? C6, H206. What is the RMM of glucose? Let's see if I can find another one. What is the RMM of NH3? So you remember to find the RMM. Are people saying 24 though? Right, so you mean C100. Should I put the units? So only 180 people correct. So you should have correct. Like I have a, I have a war against T's and when I speak in C times six times. 12 by 1 and O is 16, so 6 times 16. So these numbers here represent the mass of the individual atoms. Right? Just a refresher. This is your carbon, this is your hydrogen, this is your oxygen. When you work out that and you add it up, you get 180. 
So that's like the first step in understanding mole questions. And then you need to know to add up your little masses, multiply by how much of them exist. Most of the times, if it's a weird one, they will give you it. Right? Most, they will just give you the, the mass values. What's the difference between... Um, the syllabus said we had to know the difference between molar mass and some, something. What was it? Molar mass and relative masses. What is the difference between molar mass and relative masses? So you'll get the you'll, you'll get this stuff. What's the difference between molar mass and relative masses? You come into titration just now. Six hundred and three people and I was really watching. I wasn't really watching the um, number. I feel like I'm still talking to 300 people. Not that is be any different, really. Eh? I say I'll be the same. I'm the same person. People don't change me. All this power, 600 people, does not has no effect. <laughs> has no effect on me. <laughs> ah. But I still I still click the press add button every now and then and win a one dollar or something. All the best camp students. Um some you all see the difference? Okay, what's the definition of molar mass then? What's the definition of molar mass? What is the definition of molar mass? And obviously, like if I was doing this every day, like how I'd be doing maths every day, four or five hours a day, I would have been able to state out my my lesson plan and everything better. Like I, in each topic in maths, I have a lesson plan. The grams in atom per mole, molar mass in the mass of one molar substance. You understand? You have to have the word grams involved. You have to have the word grams involved. It's the number of protons in any given. What? What really going on here? Chat, put the definition of molar mass in there. So do it for the love, not for the likes. Good thing you remind me. I'll press the likes button. <laughs> I'll press the likes button. Which tag was? The mass in grams of one mole of a chemical substance. Mass in grams of one mole of a substance. So that's it, right? Mass in grams. The mass in grams. So when I say mass... You want to say grams, and you want to say one mole of the substance. Key words, people. So the mass in grams of one mole of the substance. So the fact that you have grams involved here is the main difference between relative atomic and relative molecular and, and, and them kind of thing, right? Uh, what's the definition for mole, which we just, we just went through? Somebody write it in the chat again. These definitions in the tab down. Anytime they start off these questions, they open up with a definition. What is the definition for mole again? The tag boss. Tag boss. Tag boss. Is that you? Tag boss. Is that you? <laughs> this is some of the masses of its atomic components in gram. What? Oh, some people living in the past. Some people living in the past. Wait now, it have a long, it have a long number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon 12. Right. So you can state it a few ways. I, I, I've seen some definitions here that showing me that you don't fully understand what it means. Some people, what is the amount of substance that contains 6.10 to the power 23 particles in that substance? Yes, so Kiani, Kiani, we love that definition. That is just perfect. That is just perfect. Right? But some of the other is the amount of substance that contains the same amount, number of particles that there as there in 12 grams of carbon 12. That's perfect as well, and in brackets, put 6 by 10 to the power of 23. Avogadro's constant. 
right? So those definitions people have, they are good now. Um, and mole, what does mole measure? What is the measure? So like we know the SI units, length, I'm trying to write with the, with the line. <laughs> length, we know mass, we know temperature, we know um, current. So we have meters, kg, Kelvin, um, amperes. What does mole measure? Right, and somebody says it. Mo said it. Mole measures the amount of a substance. And mole is just a number. You, uh, just a really huge number. 6 by 10 to the power of 23. That was just given as a number. Right? That's just a given by us humans. <laughs> right? Um, and it just means, like, if there was... 6 by 10 to the power of 23 tag bosses, that'll be one mole of tag boss. If there was 6 by 10 to the power of 23 dots here, if I could draw 6 by 10 to the power of 23 dots, which I can draw, I could probably keep drawing for some good hundreds of years and maybe not make that. Um, that would be one mole of dots. One mole. So it's just a number, really. Um, and some people see a little too much into moles. Some people see a little too little into moles. So a mole is really, really stands for a number, the amount of a substance. Just like a dozen. Like I, if I say, buy me two dozen eggs, two dozen, that's like two moles of eggs, but just mole is much bigger than a dozen. 600 hexillion is the correct number. Yes, 600 hexillion. And somebody, some YouTuber, have this real good boy. I think it's Tyler is his name or something. I forget his name of the channel. If you search moles on YouTube, this in fact this this man whole chem channel, this whole chemistry channel is the latest for explaining chemistry concepts. Tyler DeWitt, yes, Tyler DeWitt. Tyler DeWitt. And you know as a man is live on my YouTube and things, so I know all the good channels for thing. Tyler DeWitt, you want some chemistry techniques. Explain Tyler DeWitt. Right, so anybody here, Tyler DeWitt is where you want to, is where you want to check out. Alright, so that is moles, that is thing. Um so let's 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 do a let's do a question. Now you need to know how to do it going one way and going the next way. So let's try grams to moles. Let's deal with grams to moles. Going in between grams and moles. So we'll do the textbook question here to prime up. How many moles in 27 grams of water? How many moles in 27 grams of water? What's the first step? What is the first step? Terry, yeah, Terry, Terry, Terry's a boss. Terry's, Terry, I spoke to him the other day, well, some time ago. He, he does lessons in South as well for maths. So Terry's a Trinidadian YouTuber as well. He has a nice chemistry channel. Check him out. That's my next YouTube brethren name. So people are ready to find the answer. So just like in 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 maths question one when you're trying to solve these kind of questions like with currency, exchange rate and them kind of thing. I don't remember to try and find for one. So find for the mass of one mole. Or the molar mass. Mass of one mole of H2 would be equal to, and we already know that we're going to be 16, but well, let me just put the work in, I mean, 18, 16 plus 2, right, 18, or 14 plus 2, 14 is nitrogen, wait, wait, 16 plus 2, 2 by 1 plus 16, so this is 18, 18, 18 grams. 
So this is the molar mass of the this is the molar mass of H2. The mass of H2. The mass of here, yeah, one mole of the substance. So now if there is 18 grams make one mole, how much grams, how much moles would be in 27 grams? So you have 18 grams equal one mole. 27 grams, you find for 1 by dividing by 18 and multiplying by 27. Now people learn what's that formula for this. I'm not going to teach you from the formula thing because I'm just not a formula person. But if you learn the formula and that float in your boat, you float that boat. But I would just kind of figure it out. And people are telling me that this answer is 1.5, which is basically 27 over 18. Let me see what is the formula. Number of moles is given number of particles over 6.0. Like 10 to the power 23, number of particles, uh, and um, num number of moles is given mass over mass of one mole. Uh, I don't deal up in that. I don't deal up in that formula thing. The more formulas, the more. I, I partly because I teach so much subjects too. I don't want to memorize all them formulas. Them formulas, I think. I feel when you learn too much formulas, it's kind of dumb down yourself too. Eh? Um. Okay, so that's grams and moles. Let's do a, a reverse. So we still any grams and moles, so let me copy this. Still any grams and moles here. What is the mass of 0 0.25? And I just read the textbook question. Mole of iron 2 sulfate. Iron 2 sulfate. First of all, what's the formula for iron 2 sulfate? Iron 2 sulfate. So remember, the only thing in sulfate that is monovalent is the hydrogen sulfate. Everything else is 2 minus. And iron 2 means 2 positive. So that is going to be perfectly a perfectly wrong thing. Oh, in the question here, they had iron 3. So they had iron 3. So, now we use iron 3 since they have iron 3 now. They have iron 3 sulfate. So now, it's Fe3 plus and sulfate, SO4, 2 minus. So when you join that up, 3 will go by the, 2 will go here, and the 3 will go here. Right? But you all are correct for the iron sulfate before. Iron 2 sulfate, if that is a thing. Alright? So, all right, we were the mass of 0 0.25. We still need to go and find the molar mass. We still need to say one mole. We're starting off with that same one mole thing. One, so you see, in when you're going from grams to moles, everything, we want to find what's the molar mass. So most of it, this kind of question might come in question one. You always need to start off with one mole of this is equal to how much, and then you kind of work out everything based on that. Even in your titrations, everything, you're building off of that. One mole of Fe2, SO4, 3. So this is real complicated. They will tell you the Fe, they will tell you the S, they will tell you the O. And they had an auto multiply up everything. So they would have told you that Fe is 56, S is 32, and O is 16, right? S is 32. Very rusty day boy. So you'll have 2 by the 56, because they have 2 iron. Um, sorry, and then you have well, this S in brackets here. This well, it kind of escape in the brackets that I have here, but it is in the bracket, so it has to get multiplied by three. So three by the S and S is 32, 32 grams. So it's plus 32 by three. And the O here, how many O's we have, boy? The O getting multiplied by three, but it's also four O's to begin with in the beginning, so it's O by 4 by 3. So it's plus. And how much again for this way? So it's 16 by 4 by 3. This is going to give you a nice what? One, how much you get? 400. My people say 100. 
400. 400 grams. Hopefully that's correct. The book had that, so if it's wrong, the book wrong. Right, 400 grams. When you multiply that, I can whip out my calculator and multiply that. I don't think I need to do that. 400 grams. So what's the next step? What's the question asking? What is the mass? So we are the mass. You see, so there's 0 0.25 moles. So if you are the mass, we will put the moles on the side. Look, look, look how I work out this, right? The first one. We wanted how many moles. So in, if I want the moles, I want the moles answer to be here. I want the moles answer to be here. So I write 1.5 moles, whatever. I want the moles answer to be there. So when I, if I want the moles to be on this side as the answer, and I kind of block in there. If I want the moles to be on this side, I write the grams on this side and I work down. That's how I think. So if I, I if I want the in this question, I want to find out the mass. So if I want the mass, I want my final answer to be like here, so and that will be the mass. So I need to start off with the moles. So I'll start off with the moles like this. I would say one mole of that. One mole of the Fe, whatever, I just put a box because I don't write out the whole thing, is equal to 400 grams. So therefore, 0. Point, you see what happening here now? 0 0.25 moles, where I get that number from, from the question, would be equal to the 400. And since I have a 1 to something ratio here, if I want to get the 0. 0.25, I just multiply by 0. 0.25. Does that make sense? Which is a quarter, which is 100 grams. Or oh, that people are spending 100. So, please don't take down this live after. Please. Why people say that every time? Have I ever done this before? Oh yes, I've done this before for multiple choice. But when I'm doing it, I be saying it all the time. I don't take down my lives. Even when I do real nonsense and I, I struggle through a question, I don't take down my lives. Because everything is a learning experience. I still put 4,000. <laughs> That's a mistake, sorry. Probably get excited. 400. My bad. So that's how I want you to think when you're doing calculations. Trying to keep logical, find for one. If this is that, then what is that? You need to understand that ratio thing. And that's where people is lost out from. If you're weak in understanding that kind of mathematical arithmetic from day one, that math piece of mathematical arithmetic from day one from SEA, when they have in the telling you this one has this amount of apples with so this amount of money, how much would this amount of apples cost? That kind of thinking is what you need to have done cork for this. Practice a lot of questions and, and make sure you have it sharp. Make sure you have it sharp and it's come come into play in you could just learn the formula too, but learning the formula. Some people better learn the formula, like there are some students that I taught teaching them this method just wasn't working so I just taught them the formula and they seem to grasp that and they work with that because that will happen for students who is right neat and not very logical more methodical if you are that kind of learner formula if you are not if you are a logical person you good at in maths you good at in arithmetic and figuring out stuff then just 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 learn the concept just learn the concept all right, so we learn mole to mass. There are two more things to learn. There's, there's, uh, we could start to involve in number of particles in the calculation. Number of particles. And involving in number of particles is no biggie. All you need to remember is the number six six by ten to the power of twenty three that's it yeah so all you need to remember this is six point uh, there's more to that but I think in CX is just six point zero by ten to the twenty three if the question if the question were to get more thing they will they'll they'll be if the question were to bring that two or whatever they'll be specific Oh, I Gadru's number, yeah. So that is all you need to remind number of particles. And once again, if you are more mathematically inclined, you'll be able to figure out questions involving that. So let's try a question. Once again, let's try this question here. How many moles 
in 1.8 by 10 to the power of 23 molecules of nitrogen I shouldn't put N2, I should just put nitrogen as the question how many moles in 1.8 times 10 to the power of 23 so they give you a certain number of particles like who going and really count out all them particles but <laughs> so this kind of question will really come up in real life it will come in the reverse like if you want to find how much particles there because then like you're going and sit up and count out them nitrogen atoms 1.8 by 10 to the 23 boys <laughs> right anyhow so how many moles in that amount of that amount of nitrogen that's pretty simple that's pretty simple there I know y'all don't like when I say that's pretty simple so, so how three men is like the live boy boy I don't know what to say about them three men and I find real men unappreciated but yeah nah, nah, nah. that is just a few same thing is happening in school sometimes you have a few trouble some students in one school sometimes you have, imagine if you're in caps and now the whole of Trinidad the whole of the Caribbean giving you slack because tag boss from your school boy tag boss and they, they, when you tell people from caps they say hey like the only school like you're catching that CXC thing and tell you cheat thing ding, ding, bam tag. so sometimes you have three men this like in four men this like in whatever just trolling and thing but at the end of the day them same people as add me on instagram and become friends with me and thing at the end of the day characters like tag boss in school after a few years after getting me trouble in form one two three four me and them good 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 bongs thing bap they meet me on the street they want to the thing they tell me about the job okay they join the army now they they, they sort out of their life they understand so it, it, it's just try to be the best you could be and don't worry them people Oh, let's stop counting the dislikes you can make them want to make, make a record <laughs> like saying they go up to 20 or something all right all right so how many moles in 1.8 by 10 to the power of 23 molecules of nitrogen excuse me so we get your branch already all right so how are we going to do this we want to find out moles I'll go through the thought process in this. We're going to find out how many moles. So we're going to put, we want moles to be in the answer. So we have to work with the molecules here. Right? You understand what's going on there? Molecules equal moles. From that kind of point of view, we want to work in. And we have to use this ratio. This is equal to one mole. Right? So you're just basically going from this line down into that line. So let's see what happens. So we, I will write this like, I'm using 6, right? 6 by 10 to the power of 23 Mo uh, molecules equal 1 mole of the... Anytime you pay this at a power whatever it is you're dealing with 6 point molecules of that is equal to 1 mole of that Therefore, what's the number? They say 1.8 1.8 by 10 to the power of 23 molecules is going to be equal and you have to find for 1 because this is not like 1 in this the in when it's if you start off and you started off it like one is equal to something you just multiply because you don't need to find for one anymore but if you started off and it didn't start it you didn't start off with one you start off with like 18 is equal to one you need to find for one in your calculation by dividing by the 18 first and then multiplying by this number so let's see how we do that so 1.8 by 10 to the power of three molecules would be equal to we have to divide by this first to find for 1, 6 by 10 to the power of 23, multiply by the 1.8 by 10 to the power of 23, and I saw everybody getting 0 0.3, now. 0 0.3, right? 0 0.3 what? Moles. We wanted moles. Moles of what we wanted. N2. Alright, so we can move on. Yeah, we can move on. <laughs> All right, ask the next question. How many chloride atom, chloride ions, chloride ions in 0 0.2 moles of aluminum chloride? So this is a little more meaty question. Thanks for move on. Next, next, next. How many, how many moles? 
how many no how many chloride ions so some people with moles again I remember this when I teaching students they what is the question asking me how many chloride ions they didn't know what the question is asking so in this case the question is asking for what what is the question asking for here the question is asking for number of particles well and the particles here are ions so what kind of ions chloride ions how many of them so we firstly we need to get a little relationship here we need to see how many moles real easy yes andy not a fan of moles so as if we step it's more like rip the old swag 607 people somebody write something here but we will hide in it request try to write more request try to write more clearly okay request taken the thing is more right good thing you request that my hand right you know that just that's not that i just be seeing this <laughs> yeah right now nah, that probably ups and down I, I reached that stage already you know. so i'll try to bring it up swizzle in this swizzle out next 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 so JJ write the whole thing there oh JJ write a whole question there actually boy continue <laughs> okay how many chloride ions are there in 0.2 moles of aluminum chloride okay Pay attention. One mole of aluminum chloride and aluminum is three. So it's ACL three, right? And aluminum is three plus chlorine is negative. Yeah, so good, good, good. Um one mole of that will have we start off with we with we think six by and I put in six, it could be six point zero two. What do they use? They use six. Six by ten to the power of twenty-three. Excuse me. And we use the word formula units here. Um, it will also have the question is a little different here than I would do it. I would do the three involving first, so I think I will explain it like that. Um, one mole of so I start off with that, but one mole of ACL three. And look at this now. There's actually three chlorines there. And it's the chloride ions we want to know. There are three chloride ions there. So I'm gonna put three by that. Three by this. It's gonna be 18. Or I could put 1.8 by 10 to the power of 24. Um chloride ions. It's true, right? So this is how I would do this. Let me get some wise in the chat if everything going good so far. Sometimes I feel like I'm losing people. The book have it a little different. If you lost, don't tell me just lost. Just tell me where, 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 where are you, where, what you don't understand. I don't get it. Some people don't get it. See, I know some people aren't getting it. They're just watching. So no 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 loss 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 loss. I loss. Some people have their own method of working this out. The book have a different method, but I just go along this method because I find like it easier to explain with this. Ah, how many chloride ions in? You understand what the question wants you to ask? Right? Want you to know, right? They want to know how many chloride ions are there in the aluminum chloride. Remember, aluminum chloride looks like this, and they're not asking for one mole. Of aluminum chloride accent for 0 0.2 moles. How many chloride ions, individual chloride ions are there? How many chloride ions are there in one mole of it? In one mole of aluminum chloride, you have 6 by 10 to the power of 23 formula units, which means 6 by 10 to the power of 23 ALCL3, all as one. You have this is the ALCL3, you have that big number by of them. You have all of them living there. But we want to know 
since in each one of these ALCL3, there's actually, there's actually three chlorines. Three chlorines in every one of those suckers. It means, it means, if my pen would work properly, I would be able to explain this. It means that when I want to find out what, how much chloride ions are in the AlCl3, one mole of it, how many chloride, individual chloride ions are there, I would have to multiply this number up here. I have to multiply that number up there by 3. And that is what happened. This times 3 because there are actually 3 chloride ions in every one mole. So I multiply that by 3 and I get this number here. Well, I get 18 by 10 to the power of 23, so I just pull back the point and pay 10 to the power of 24. You can use a calculator for that. You don't need to be no boss in standard notation. All right. And now, that's not what the question asks in. The question asks in for 0 0.2 moles. Question asking for zero point, right? So I've seen some ores. I've seen some ores that are a good sign. 0 0.2 moles of AlCl3. How much you expect in there? Well, 0 0.2. Alright. If if one bag have three apples, two bags will have six apples. Anytime you have one on this side, you just need to multiply. So if one mole of this if one mole of these 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 things, whatever it is, ELC, aluminum chloride, has this amount of chloride ions, then 0 0.2 moles of aluminum chloride will have 0 0.2 times that amount, 1.8 times 10 to the power 24. What number are you going to get it? Hopefully you get 0 0.2. Let me put the calculator. Yeah, same answer, anybody. 3.6 by 10 to the power of 23 Cl negative ions. Or you could write chloride ions. Why is in the chat? Why is in the chat? If you catch this, please. Now, these kind of questions classically will come in your first question. And they will come with a whole list of things. These style of questions, you may need to know it in organic chemistry, you may need to know it in titration. Why is in the chat? All right, so that's a good, that's a good vibe. All right, I'm glad, so glad to see some wise. Why is still some nose, one or two nose? If you still gain some nose, if you still gain some nose, remember the channel I tell you, you can go through. Tyler Dewitt. Like the YouTube chem boss. For some reason, like he stopped posting videos, I think. Nice stuff in camp. You can check him out. Okay, now we need to deal with. Now we need to deal with. Um, moles, mass, number of particles. You could go in between there. I'm not going to do that. Let's deal with gases, volume. Let's deal with volume. So it's like, it's like these things you need to deal with. You need to know how to go from mass to moles. Well, it's, moles is normally the starter. So moles to mass, also to number of particles, and also to volume. And the volume of that being RTP. What RTP stands for? What is the RTP number? STP. What is the STP? Right? The man asked me to try and write clearly and I'm not doing I'm not showing any difference. I'm not I'm not making a change. So let me just do it over one more time so I remember to make a change in my life. So moles is like the starting block. You need to know how to switch between these three things for CXC. You need to know the concentration too. Concentration as well. Right. So good concentration in CXC too. So concentration is E. Okay, so it's four things, people. Four things. Moles. 
to mass with detergent. I using it. Actually, I now use it, but take it for a second. You can see I can get my pen. <laughs> so moves the mass to 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 concentration, um, volume, and number of particles. Now the funny thing is, so this needs to be in your mind like a concept. Bridging, the Bridging who asked me to write better, that was nice, that nice, eh? What are you beautifully looking? What are you beautifully looking? Stop, stop, injustice fellow, could you stop writing that every, could you do me a favor and stop writing that every one minute, please? <laughs> um, so, moles to mass, what they will ask in a question, sometimes they might want you to go from mass to concentration. That happened in, I think, the Adua Chem paper the other day. Question one was mass, mass to concentration. It had some mass and you wanted to work back out. In, it was a titration. Um, what is the key is connect. What is the connection between all of them? The connection in ma in moles to mass is. What is, it, is the molar mass? So like a mole, one mole. The connection in moles to number of particles is Avogadro's. Is Avogadro's number, and we're going to see what is the connection that connects these two, the volume and the concentration. So if you have to go from mass to one of these, you would normally tie back to moles and then go back this way. So you need to know how to go between moles and mass. So really, the arrow should point both directions. You need to know how to do forward and backward in all of them. And once you can do forward and backward in all of them, you see that first part in chemistry. That's like the this, this is like the hardest part here, and then equations, redox, and electrochemistry, and you're kind of done there. So just understand this, right? So when you've done a question, can you wait so I can screenshot it? Virgin, when I've done a question, you, you better be screenshot. You better your finger on that screenshot, and you'll be real, real ready. Because I, I don't know if I can remember that. Okay, so let's go on with volume now. Volume. Volume, 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 volume. Let's do a question in volume. So I asked a question about STP and RTP. For, stand, for STP, that is standard. For RTP, that is room temperature. Standard is zero degrees or so 273 Kelvin. STP is standard and RTP is room temperature, which is what? 25 degrees Celsius, 298 degrees Kelvin. I'm pretty sure. Um, so the whole definition, the whole def I'm not doing organic already. Do organic. Organic is on my channel in uh, in six or seven or eight, nine, ten or something videos. You can check them out. Real small videos. So you could you could take it bite size. At standard temperature, where temperature is zero degrees and the pressure is one atmospheric pressure or one zero one kilopascals. Um, the volume, so STP, STP is the 22.4, but RTP is the 24, because this one is closer to the 25 degrees Celsius, which is, R, which is that's just remembrance thing for me. This one is 25 degrees, this one is 0 degrees, both of them at atmospheric pressure. YouTube just told me to take a break. <laughs> Are you doing it? Right? May God bless us. So, like, Shansi, I teaching you to sing on. You don't know. But it was really the other way around. I teach Shansi to sing. Um, molar volume can be used to convert a given volume of gas to mole, blah, 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 blah. Anyhow, this is the con this is the connection. Because both of these things are saying in one mole, that's how much dm cube you have. Both of these things are saying for one mole, one mole of gas will fill up this amount of space. That is it. Once you have the connection, you're ready to cook. No? You're ready to cook. So the connection here, the connection, remember we are already connection, right? The connection between these two is the RTP or STP value. The connection here was the molar mass of whatever it is you're dealing with. 
and the connection here was the 6 by 10 to the power of 23. Once you have the connection, like what number you need to use, you free up yourself. And we just need to deal with concentration. So let's do a question. Let's do a question. Let's do a question. How many How many sulfur trioxide why this writing in delay so work properly? Sulfur trioxide molecules. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. The man asked me to write properly, boy. Let me try my best. I'm gonna zoom in a little more. Molecules. Ooh, I can do it. Cohen, you can do it, man. In 720 cm cube of sulfur trioxide. Gas at RTP. Must state which one you're dealing with. So, how many sulfur trioxide molecules in 720? So, the key here, you didn't really get much things. 720, um, you know, you're dealing with RTP. Let's move this a little. That's opaque. Deep, 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 though. Make this a little less opaque. RTP thing. You know, sulfur trioxide, you know, you want how many molecules? So, this is a little weird because what are they asking me for? What are they asking us for? They're asking us for number of. So, I may not do inorganic. You may be on your own for the inorganic because this, all these chapters here might finish in what, three hours? I might finish in three or four hours. And by that time, what that time, what, what the time will be in three or four hours? How much time we all know? That might be, that might be twelve o'clock. Feel that time to do an early. It will be up till three o'clock to do an organic. So if all you're up, right? But I'll definitely do all of uh, on the channel will be done basically all of the first two sections. Anyhow, let's go, let's go. Had a mash some more pace now, people. So they asking us to find number of particles. And we need, because inorganic is just memorizing, you could do that on your own as well. And you need to find, uh, you need to find number of particles, how much molecules, and you were given, you were given volume. I just want you to see how you should be thinking. So we give them volume, we'll use a connection from volume to go to moles, and then we use the connection from moles to go to number of particles. What's the connection between volume and moles? RTP or STP. What was given? RTP. And what's the connection between moles and number of particles? 6.0 by 10 to the power of 23. So let's see how we let's see how we do this. Let's see how we how we'll do this. People, you could somebody saying. Somebody saying you could use Terry for the inorganic. You could use Terry or the channel I'll tell you about for the inorganic. You all 622 people online. Make sure you press like on the video. Make sure you screenshot. Send it on Instagram. Send it on your Facebook. Whatever. Take, take, take. Let's go for. So let's let's solve the question. We want to go from volume to moles. Volume to moles. So we want to go from volume to moles. I'm writing this so you can see concepts. Volume to moles. So I'll. I want my moles answer to be on this side. You always want the answer to come down on this side. Volume to moles, use your connector now. Where you have RTP is closer to 25, 24 DM cube. 24 DM cubes. Let me just make sure I'm in the correct thing. 24. What, what question are you in? 24. DMQ. I gotta change it to CMQ. Alright, so that is it. Okay, I know everything. So 24 DMQ equal 1 mole. This is 24, 0, 0, 0 CMQ. Equal 1 mole. 
right? How much CM volume no one did 720? 720 CMQ would be at, this number is not one, so I need to find for one. One over twenty-four thousand CMQ multiply by seven twenty. What number is this? Zero point zero three moles. But all, all these numbers I think unimportant. <laughs> Somebody must have given excellent and say that. These numbers are important. What you need to understand because the numbers could change for the exam, right? What you need to understand is what we what we did. I'm going to work it out, don't worry. But I want to repeat what I did so you can sink in somebody's mind. They, want, they gave us volume and we want to find number of particles. We don't really have a direct connection. There could be, but we don't. We don't have, want to, we don't have a direct connection. So as I said in the concept map, you need to go between you need to go be you need to use moles as your touch base. It's like Shigonas is the hub. Right? So if I if I wanna go to Arima, I go to Shigonas, then go to Arima. If I wanna go to Toko, I go to Shigonas, then I go to Toko. Whatever is like the hub. So the hub in this question, I'm jumping to moles and then I'll go from moles and I will go to the answer, which is number of particles. Of particles and I'll do that in the next page. So first that is a two-part question. Anytime you had to go from one to the next one is a two-part question, right? Two-part question. So I have 24 dm cubes equal one mole, 24 um, thousand cm cubes equal thing, blah blah blah, 0 0.03 moles. This should be correct. I could put MOL for short. Um mm -hmm. so now I have moles. Now I have the connector. I have the moles, so and they normally split up this question for any thing. So I need to go from mole to number of particles. So if I have, by the way, it's 24 dm cubes of whatever it is, 24 cm cube of whatever it is, I forget what substance or sulfur trioxide. So, and what the accent for the whole sulfur trioxide itself of sulfur trioxide, sometimes they can ask you for something inside of this, like, like what we do, right? What we do before. Like, especially if it's an ionic compound, they might ask you how much of this specific thing there is, what is the mass of this specific thing of, like, maybe the ion in iron sulfate, iron something, right? The specific thing. So, I hope you understand what I mean there. So, I have 0 0.3, 0 0.03. You notice I, I have this, but I want to get my answer here, so I put that on that side. So, 0 0.03, let me write the proper thing now. 0 0.03 moles of, what it is? Um, sulfur trioxide, SO3, would be equal to, oh, I jumped the gun a little bit, always start off with the connection, the connection is that one mole equals 6 by 10 to the power of 23 um, particles, shocks, I forget, right, SO3. SO3. So you start off with the connection. So therefore 0 0.03, I multiply by 0 0.03 now. And my answer is going to be 1.8 by, and everybody has been this long time, but you know, I take my time to explain it and thing, molecules. All right. Why is in the chat? Why is in the chat? Just one more to talk about now, concentration. Why is in the chat if you understand that? Moles concentration. By the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. I ask questions and do surveys and figure out what people really want on Instagram. Instagram is like my pulse. It's like a pulse. Right now, I think I'm one of the person with the best pulse of the on the whole Caribbean in terms of what people study for CSEC and how how you know how students are feeling, what exam thing, what they need, what where we thing like that. So. The more of you all following me there would be great. Plus, you make my Instagram look like like the wettest of the wet now. You bring up my Instagram subscriptions. So take a little moment and pause and go and follow me on Instagram at Kerwin Springer. Um, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? Concentration. So let's see if we can explain why is the little link in concentration. Bim, bam, boom. So concentration... 
I shouldn't write moles concentration. I should just write concentration as a big topic. Concentration. So I see some Y's in the chat there. I see Y's in the chat and I forget to check and see. Check and see how things looking. Y's, 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 Y's. Nice. Nice. Um, so concentration, you just need to know that concentration could come in two forms. It could come in the molar form or it could come in the mass form. Both of them speak in terms of dm cube. So it's grams per dm cube, grams per dm cube or moles per dm cube. And there's a connection there basically. Question, question for the chat. What is a man now get a notification for the like YouTube wicked another <laughs> two hours and a half later? A man now see beep, go in spring his life. He must he come on bam so start. Two hours and a half past. <laughs> what is the definition for standard solution? <laughs> Preparation of salts, I didn't do preparation of salts. I skipped preparation of salts. I started from five. <sighs> them, them, them memorizing thing, it really is you had to memorize it and it's, I didn't do things that you kind of had to figure out more. A solution with a known concentration, right? And that is be a question they ask. Even me who do, who normally with, uh, with maths pass papers know that that question has come a good few times. They start off with what is the standard solution? A solution, I don't want to write it, write it written, write any comments. A solution whose concentration is known accurately. Right? So, make sure you have that. So, concentration can either be given in mass or molar. Mass concentration, molar concentration. And it speaks about how much of something there is in a DM cube. So, the link is really the DM cube. How much of it is in a DM cube. And you should know that one DM cube is equal to a thousand cm cubes. I didn't mention that last time, but I'm just assuming that everybody know that, right? Um, I think we're ready for a little question here. They do a, they do a large, a larger than charge question. Um, I'm going to put some lines on this to, to try and to try and encourage myself. To bring out the best right in me. Uh, how about that? Yeah. I hope that's not affecting anybody. What? As a W. Mass of sodium hydroxide. Now, they normally write it out in words, yeah, so they wouldn't like help you with the formula. In case you don't know the formula for sodium hydroxide, you lost some marks there already. What mass of sodium hydroxide is needed to produce is needed to make hmm, kind of small boy to make but nobody in complaining so like I'll see it what mass of sodium hydroxide is needed to make 750 cm cube of sodium hydroxide solution they saw my son is talk sometime he just turn on a robot voice this man is three years old eh? he just turned on that robot voice and decided to talk like that for some minutes straight i am hungry can you bring some milk for me <laughs> you are really ridiculous sodium hydroxide solution with a by the way those you know it I want to have fake, fake profiles on the chat right now I ain't even bothering them right now but people is like to have the fun now boy with a concentration I taking so long to write all this question with a concentration of 0 0.5 mole per dm cube 
feel like I need a prize alone for writing all this question. Jesus and ages. Next time I copy and copy so and paste these questions. I'm going to take off this background now. Bam. So what mass of so sodium hydroxide is needed to make 750 cm cube? Of sodium hydroxide solution with a concentration of 0 0.5 moles per dm cube. So let me start to concept conceptualize it. Now, a lot of the times, as I say in question one, they wouldn't like hit you with this bam, full question just so. They just kind of walk you through the question, like they would make you do one step, then guide you into the next step, then into the next step. And you could see it in question one, into the next step. So this kind of prompt you along. But let's see if, how, what we would do if we, if we get hit with it just so. What mass of sodium and you really need to produce? So what it is we want right away? We want mass is needed to make 750 cm3. We also given the volume uh, with the constant, and we also given the concentration. Excuse. Mm, 0.5 moles. So mole per dm cube. So the first thing, the first thing you need. We want, we want, we want the mass, we give them a molar concentration. If we wanted the mass and we just give them a mass concentration, we cook in it around coke gas, they are ready. If we give them a mass concentration, it means this amount in a DM cube, so they just kind of fizzle out and find out how much amount in 750 cm cube. I hope all you understand what I'm saying here. If we were given the mass concentration, like, um, how many of a grams for the MQ? If they want to find out how much grams now in 750, they just set it up like 1000 1, cm cube equal this amount of grams. So 750 cm would equal that over 1000 multiplied by 750. Understand? I need to um, flip the screen. So right now, this is my right hand, but I'm showing up as my left hand. So let me just quickly flip this. So that when I explain them things and I and I flail it, my hands all over the place, it will flail in the right direction. Hey, hey, hey. Are you come across there for a while? I see flip. I'll go into the center. Transform. Flip horizontal. Left. Right. Alright, cool. Alright, let, let, let me do the question because I forget what I was talking about just now. Um, ding, 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 ding. So I'm watching the question. I'm trying to show you what I'm thinking now. 750 cm3 of sodium hydroxide solution. We want to make that. And we have a concentration of 0 0.5 moles in the DMQ. So immediately, if I know there are 0 0.5 moles in this DMQ, I could work out how much mass is in the DMQ. If there are 0 0.5 moles of this in the DMQ, I could work out how much mass. How I could do that? I could be like... I can be like one mole contains this amount, so 0 0.5 moles will contain this amount. It's working out moles to moles to grams. So let's do that. Moles to grams. So one mole, I need to write out what it is. One mole, where it, what is it? Sodium hydroxide. One mole of sodium hydroxide equals how many grams? Sodium is 23 plus O plus H. I don't need to put brackets, there's no multiplication here. So it's 23 plus how much here? How much here in total? 23 plus 16 plus 8 plus 1 plus 16 plus 1. How much again? 40. Sodium hydroxide is 40. And I don't forgive me, and I ain't doing it in a while, otherwise these numbers would just be at the top of my head. 40, stop on that, 40, gee, as we roast the moon, so I need to cut that out. All right, the one mole of NaOH is equal to that amount. I just worked out how much grams we need, how much grams, 40 grams. So one mole is equal to 40 grams. This is the connector. I'm showing you how I think in here, I just point out my, I just point out my knowledge here, accept it. So now, how much the question was asking me for? 0 0.5 moles. So 0 0.5 moles on natural names. 0 0.5 moles of NaOH 
would be equal to, well, I already have 1, so I don't need to find for 1, I just need to multiply now. It will be 40 times 0 0.5, so this is 20 grams. So in the solution, we need 20 grams if it was a DN cube. So this means 20 grams, I, I just changed the molar concentration to gram concentration. You understand what happened there? 20 grams to DN cube. So now my final change is from, what do we want? What mass? I want the mass, so whether I want I spawn this side, and I have the volume. How do I have the volume? Because I just found 20 grams in a DM cube. So 1 DM cube, which is also 1000 CM cube, is equal to 20 grams. So therefore, 750 CM cube would be equal to 20, I define for 1 because this number is not 1, divided by 1000, multiplied by 750, which is equal to how much? Are they fighting in the chat? Are they still fighting in the chat? Am I the only one who can barely hear what he's saying? My volume bar, good. My volume bar, good. So, yeah, use the only one. <laughs> um, turn off your volume, use your headphones. I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. My volume and maximum, and right now it's it just about peaking every time there. So, everything good. Yeah, I got to read in paper one. So, this is good. This is good. You get 15 grams. And it kind of makes sense. If 20 grams in a CM cube, this is 3 quarter of that. So 3 quarter of 20 is actually 15. You always check back to see if your question makes sense. That was, that was it. Why is in the chat? Why is in the chat if you understand concentration now? You need to understand how to go from molar concentration to concentration in grams. So concentration is not really anything big per se. DM cube is the key. If you watch this and you say, wow, I finally understand that, you didn't finally understand it, you know, trust me. If you watch this just now and you say, okay, I finally understood that. You did not finally understand stood that. You only understand that if you can, replete, you can do it again for yourself. You need to go and find that question now and see if what you just understand, you could repeat for yourself, like in an exam condition without help from me, without help from the textbook. If you can do that now, then you have finally understood this. All right, next, some next in the chat. Ding, 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 ding. Please do another. Okay, let's do one more. Let's do one more, different style of question. I just do an example questions here since I don't need to pull out my calculator or anything. How many? And I can just double check my answer. Moles of calcium. Hey. How many moles of calcium nitrate? Oh god, I really had to write out this whole question again. How many moles of calcium nitrate are present? People who is watch this YouTube video. And go and message me on Facebook. I send some of Facebook messages every five days or so. I don't really be on Facebook. The reason I don't be on Facebook much is because I'm from the old school, so a lot of my friends on Facebook. When I go on Facebook, I waste time. And I am a person who can't afford to waste time, literally. A solution. So I don't even just go on my Facebook. So the best place to message me is on Instagram. Need on my email because my email bulky. So only if you're dealing with business, like business, you have some business to do with me. Not even lessons, some business to do with me, like promotion or something, then email. The best place to message me is either in this comment section in the video or on Instagram. Instagram is quick and easy. I can also view the message without opening messages and stuff like that so I can know whether I spam. So, the only problem is for students, Instagram is very distracting. So, I don't know how you're using Instagram. Go see a comment and do work on Instagram and message me something or just ask me something. And boom, bang, you end up spending three hours on Instagram. Also, I don't do homework anymore. Last year, people used to message me homework. I used to do all. 
I still try to answer all messages that people ask me. I, don't, I try to not let them up for too long. But I don't do homework anymore. Because if I do everybody homework, I could never do a life. Right? So people who send me the homework, I just respectfully tell them I don't do homework anymore. I don't do single question anymore. If you send me a question, I wouldn't do it. I'll just direct you to some place where you can get the answer. All right. How many moles of calcium nitrate are present in 200 cm cube of a solution which has a molar concentration of 0 0.4 moles per dm cube? Yes, they could bring back rate of reaction. So the next thing we are going to do, the next thing we are going to do is one more question is reaction. The next thing we are going to do is acid, bases and so on. Acid, base, and so on. That's the next thing we're going to do. Then we're going to swing back and touch some other stuff. The live session went good, but like I wish we had started earlier so we could have finished a good chunk of the syllabus, maybe like about 60% of the syllabus. How many moles of the thing are present in 200? Okay, what do they want? How many moles of calcium nitrate? They want moles are present in 200 cm cubes. They give us volume which has a molar concentration, they give us the concentration. Do you see kind of question or? That's not what's the thing. They give us concentration, volume, but they wanted mass. So this question is a little different. They want moles this time. They want moles and they give us concentration and volume. So we had to see how we're going to tie what to what to pull, to pull them out. So I'm, I'm, I'm going off Express what I'm thinking here now. Listen carefully. This is the people I'm paying the answer. Well done, but for the people who don't understand, I need a little explanation. How many moles of calcium nitrate are present in 200 cm cubes of a solution which has a molar concentration of 0 0.4? When I read sleep, guys had to read over a question 100 times, which has a molar concentration of 0 0.4 moles per dm cube. All right, 0 0.4 moles in every dm cube. Okay, this is a very simple question. If there are 0 0.4 moles, in every dm cube, we could work out how many moles in the cm, 200 cm cube, right? This is the connector, and this is what we want. Okay. Okay. This dies all you want. Well, we can we can run through that. <coughs> Zero point four moles for dm cube. What is this we want? We want moles. So we'll like put the moles on this side. Let's put the volume here. So 0 0.4 moles. And the thing that I want is on the right hand side. 0 0.4 moles in 1000 cm cube. I keep forgetting to write the substance. 1000 cm cube of what? Calcium nitrate. Calcium nitrate. Nitrate is true? Yeah. So NO3, and all the N's except one, the nitride is one minus. So that's calcium nitrate. And now you we'll just simply come down now to 200. That is it? That is it, right? 200 cm cubes would be equal to. So just figure out how to line up things is where students get the problems. And I hope all these all these working that I do help just help you to see how to line it up. Um 0 0.4 divided by 1000 multiplied by 200 and the answer everybody getting is 0 0.08 moles of calcium nitrate why is in the chat why is in the chat why is in the chat One more style of uh, a different style of thing. What volume of hydrogen measured? I know we didn't put that. What volume of hydrogen? Hydrogen gas. RTP. would be produced, so we're dealing with a product, so we're dealing with a reaction thing here, would be produced 
when 10.8 grams was the time going up to 3. So when it reached 3, three hours, I had to turn off the live stream and turn it back on. I turn it off, take a 10 minute break and then come back. Turn it off, maybe drink some water and them kind of things. So my voice would mash up. Like when I do that 8 hour thing, my voice was literally on fire. 10.8 um, grams of aluminium reacts with reacts with excess hydrochloric acid all right so when they give you a reaction like it like this when they give you a reaction like this i call the ministry of security gary griffith is coming to y'all so you want you want a pack of cashews or all that spring are coming like a superman to be honest all right, so what volume of, hmm, that handwriting is starting to fall back there. So let me start to decode this question. We want volume um, we're given the RTP, so we're given a connection between the volume and moles there, where it is RTP, um, where we have mass. So we need to go from mass to moles, then to volume. You understand? Mass to moles, then to volume. So we are given mass, we need to go to moles probably, that's what I was thinking in my mind, and then go to volume. But to be able to go from mass to moles is hydrogen and we give the mass of the aluminium. So we, to figure out the mass of the aluminium, I think we need, to, we need to write the equation. You can't get away without writing the equation here because if you don't write the equation, you lost some mass. So the equation is aluminium reacting with what? hydrochloric acid to give you aluminium chloride and hydrogen gas nice now we need to paint with little things here we need to balance this killer First thing I put in is solid aqueous um, aluminium chloride. Is that we are going through the solubility thing just now? That's aqueous and G. So remind me to go through the solubility of salts. Alright. So let's see how we balance in this now. Hmm. Two H's here. Two here, nah, nah, I ain't gonna work. Let me put it in green so I show you what, what my mind thinking. I really rusty in this. Eh? Two, um, I, what I did, I put two here to try and get the hydrogen. No, because then I'll get two for the chlorine, but I really need, and I really need um three chlorines. So the best bet would be to try for 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 hmm, for three. No. For six, six and two, I just do an LCM kind of thing. Yes. Six, let me see what's going on here. Why is this going up to such big numbers? Six, three, so now the hydrogen is them good. I just need a two here. Two chlorine staying two, two here. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Right, two six two three. So I'm uh, just gonna repeat it again. All I do is for people who want to talk about balancing equations. First thing I look at is the hydrogen. I need two hydrogens here. Now I need to see what getting upset. Two chlorines, but I really need three chlorines. So I'll know I'll always need to get two here. So I, I, I do a kind of LCM of two and three is six. So if I put six here, that should work for everybody six chlorines so i just need to put two here to get these six chlorines and six by each so i need to put a three here because i will call the lcm two three six we call it nice and now i just need to make sure the aluminium the aluminium happy so two right so the equation is balanced now we did all of that because we need to find out how many moles we have 
8 grams of aluminium, how many moles of aluminium is present there? So we want to go from grams to moles and we're doing this for the aluminium. <laughs> Excuse me. How many grams in in one in one mole of aluminium? I think it's 100 and it. No, it's 20, 27. Why did I say 100 and it? It's 27 grams. So one mole of AL is equal to 27 grams. Therefore, 1.0 is 10.08. Ten point zero eight grams would be equal to one over twenty seven multiplied by ten point zero eight grams. How much is this? This is going to give me zero point four. Zero point four moles. Why did I find this? Because I, if I found that there's zero point four moles here, then now I could find how many moles of hydrogen to expect. And let me show you how we do this ratio. Since two moles, according to the equation, two moles of aluminium produces, and I like to do this double arrow, I don't know if we still do that, produces, actually it's just one arrow, produces three moles of H2, then 0 0.4 mole, yeah, so you got a little ratio system going there, 0 0.4 mole. 0.4 moles, which we just worked out, will produce 3, this is not 1, so I need to find for 1, by dividing by 2, and then multiplying by this number here. You see how much times we do that already? Instead of learning formula, 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 formula. So this is going to be equal to, how much? 0 0.6. And this is how they'll split up the question in, in, in if this comes. If this come can't wait for the break don't understand anything oh my gosh stop saying don't understand anything ask questions if you ask a question I could say okay this is that in your school and your anything in your life don't just see a straight up negative thing just so if you're trying to understand it see what you where you're going wrong me um country I'm working can't fool you can't fool either I gone <laughs> zero that's a big time statement why this is food oh this is food this is food for some people how did he get 27 grams of aluminium this is given you see how she asks a question there this is given this is given this is given the molar mass so they'll say one mole of aluminium or they'll say the molar mass of aluminium is 27 grams what topic we're doing after this? After this, we're doing acid bases and salts. After that, we're doing titration. <coughs> now, after that, we're doing redox. By that time, it'll be about 11 o'clock. Then we do titration. Then, then we, we, we kind of reach where, where CV is going. Then we do electrolysis. By the time I do, ele after I do electrolysis, it'll be time to done. I might do um, energetics. Alright, so 0 0.4 moles, let me just finish up this and let's wrap back. 0 0.4 moles, let's take a little recap what's happening here. What volume of RTP would be, volume of H2, blah, 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 blah. so you find the moles of aluminium, we use the equation to link the moles to figure out how many moles of hydrogen produced. And now we're in, the, we're in the home stretch, we're in the end game here in this question. 0 0.6 moles of hydrogen produced. So we can say 1 mole, ah, this thing not writing properly. One mole of hydrogen is equal to is RTP they say. If it was STP we use twenty two if it was twenty two point something, twenty two point four something. If it's RTP we use twenty four. DMQ. So zero point six moles H two would be the zero point six by twenty four, which is 14.4 dm cube, which is the same. They actually didn't dm cube. They didn't actually in anything. 
If the oxidants here and give you multiply by a thousand, right? Multiply by a thousand. Why is in the chat? Acid bases and salts. We're gonna do that next. I'm gonna turn off the live, take 10 minutes, coming back to do acid bases and salt. Why is in the chat? Cohen got destroyed by Thanos, Matt CXC. It's so strange. Last year, last year, so many people were helped in the maths for CXC that I did. Now, within la since last year until this year, I must be add on how much hours of maths, how much more hours of maths teaching. But yet, less of my work came in that maybe about 60-70% of what I did came. Last year, maybe like about what 80-90% of what I did came. Which means like they watch my videos and say, yeah, the channel not make too much of this come. Well, that is the conspiracy theory. Um, but after this year, for those who come in next year, it's going to be murder, man. I'm going to murder them. Um, so what are you what do you think of Admat's test? The Admat test was sweet. You had this question in the Admat test was it seems where they give you three stationary points and you have to back work to find the equation of the line that kinda messed up people. But other than that, everything else was doable. The live that we did last night, a lot of things repeat. Um, even the whole identity that we do repeat, the exact identity. Just switching the screen too fast. Or to snap the question, to snap the answer. If you're following if you want to see this, you could go in the Antindale book. I'm switching slowly between the screens now. This is the last one. This is the last one. Switch here now. You could always pull back the video a little bit and press pause. Pull back here. It's alright. It's alright. You didn't fail me. You tried your best. Um, pull back to the next one here. And pull back to the next one here. Some people try to do admats with no teacher and thing. If anybody in if anybody's in form four or something and they're doing going to do over admats, my admats online class is starting in July. But my maths online class is starting next two weeks or something like that. It's that is the first Tuesday in, in June. But my admats class will start a little later. And I'm going to have a pure maths class as well. What am I looking for? I'm looking for the number to call for registration for any of my online classes. But actually, you can't register for any class except the maths class right now. This is not my number, so don't ask for any um like home advice on this number. If you want to message me, message me on Instagram. This is the number to register for the maths. This is the number to register for the maths. It's at maths only in Trinidad Cohen here. And I really see in trouble. Big up the Ministry of Education and National Security. Yes, big up the Ministry of Education. Big up the National Security of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, break for 20 minutes. I'm breaking for 15 minutes. 15 minutes or so. I'm going to drink some water. Stretch because I feel like my bones locking down. I swear I've never heard of it. I'm going to go to a good slide to end this. Um, right. So we see you all in 15 minutes, okay? So I'm going to turn it off so that the, this would stop and it will be able to load back in a few hours. If I do the video too long, it might load back quickly. 30 minutes. No, we have real work to get done. Next up, just telling you what we're going to do next up. Cohen always killing my comments, man. Skipping my comments. Sorry. Acids, be I didn't skip that one. <laughs> Acids, bases, and salts. We're gonna do that next. Have some tables and ideas and concepts to talk about there. We'll be speeding through that. Though. We're gonna do redox then. We're gonna do redox reaction. That's kind of normal. Then we're gonna do electrochemistry. That's not too normal <laughs> for some people. Then we're gonna do rates of reaction. Energetics. That'll be the end there. Acid bases and salt will touch titration in that, I guess. Yeah. Alright, people. Yeah, so volumetric analysis will touch that in there. So far, all that we did was chemical equations. Types of bonding, structure and bonding. We did that in detail. 
and we did moles. People were be was begging me to do moles for so long. I completed the entire of moles here. You should be you should be good for, for moles there. So we have a good bit of work to do next. I suspect that amount of work will take us straight up to 12 o'clock. After that, you know, could, there's organic chemistry. So in the break, you can take a look at my organic chemistry videos. Pure registration for pure maths. Pure maths is starting in July too. So the registration for that is later on, right? I still need to organize that. Um, I need to recap my whole pure math syllabus and have everything organized like a plan straight on lesson plan everything. All right. So later. End stream. Too bad the iPad is not touched. The laptop is not touched. See you all in.